Hey, what's up? Ben here from blogwithben.com and welcome to the how to start a blog tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to build, grow, and monetize your very own self-hosted WordPress blog. Specifically, we're gonna be creating a lifestyle blog using the free WordPress theme Bard. And by the end of this video, you'll have a sleek and stylish digital platform that you can monetize as well. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Here you're gonna find free step-by-step -step video tutorials on how to build, grow, and monetize WordPress blogs. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe to the Blog Within YouTube channel. That way you can stay up to date with all the videos that come out in the future. I would also love it if you would subscribe to my mailing list. That way you can gain access to my free ebook, The Blog Starter Kit. So with that being said, I'm glad you're here. We got a lot to cover, so let's take a closer look at what you're gonna be making in this video. What you're looking at right now is Bard, and this is the free WordPress theme that we'll be using to build your blog. It has a ton of amazing features and gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to customizing your blog. Now, the Bard theme was created by WP Royal, and they're a creative and dedicated group of WordPress theme developers and designers that have been crafting powerful WordPress themes since 2012. They strive to make their themes user-friendly and as flexible as possible, and the Bard theme is no exception. It's a fully functional website with blogging capabilities that are ideal for lifestyle bloggers, and the Bard theme comes standard with some pretty amazing features. For starters, the homepage allows you to present your content with a minimalist yet attractive feel, and the free theme also comes with features that you typically have to pay for. For example, this theme comes with a homepage slider, a featured section that helps you drive traffic to your online stores, landing pages, and blog posts, a sticky sidebar that stays in place as you scroll down the page, an Instagram feed within the footer, and much, much more. Additionally, the logo, colors, sidebar, and footer are all easily customizable and can be built to match your particular brand. Now, the blogging features include a two-column layout that allows you to publish great-looking content and earn money at the same time. Bard lets you easily implement affiliate marketing promotions, Google AdSense campaigns, and you can even sell your own products from your blog. The sky's the limit, and Bard really gives you the opportunity to earn a passive income online. Additionally, I'm gonna give you access to my code cheat sheet, which saves you the headache of having to manually code everything yourself. And my code cheat sheet lets you easily copy and paste the ready-made code and gives you the ability to customize every aspect of this theme so that it fits your style and overall brand. And no blog is complete without having a way to build your following. And this theme allows lead generation capabilities and it can help you build and grow your email list. Plus, I'm gonna show you how to install an opt-in form within your blog so you can begin to grow your sponsorships and market to your audience. This is the perfect launch pad for any digital business and I'm gonna show you how to build everything you've seen so far step by step. And one final note, People nowadays are spending an increased amount of time on their mobile devices, which means they'll expect your site to be responsive. And having a responsive design not only helps you meet and exceed these expectations, but as of April 21st, 2015, Google Search expanded its use of mobile friendliness as a ranking signal. So if you wanna get found on Google, your blog needs to be responsive. And as you can see, Bard is 100% responsive and it looks great too. The user experience on the desktop is mimicked on any mobile device or tablet, and the responsiveness of this theme can assure you that you're meeting the mobile requirements of Google's search algorithm. That's a great thing about WP Royal and the Bard theme. They offer some pretty substantial layouts whenever you compare them to the premium themes on the market. For example, this premium theme is going for about $130, and that's just for the theme alone. That doesn't even include the professional services to install the theme. As you can see, this company is charging you nearly $400 to do what I'm going to show you in this very video. Plus, this tutorial includes some web design and development aspects, and many WordPress designers will charge thousands of dollars for custom design and development. So if you think about it, you're saving thousands of dollars if you follow my video and just do it yourself. So with that being said, let's take a closer look at what you're going to be learning in this video. All right, so as always, I've packed this tutorial with a ton of value, but let's quickly go over the main topics that we're gonna cover in this video. First, you're gonna learn how to set up your web hosting account using Bluehost Web Hosting. Next, we're going to install the WordPress.org blogging software. Then we're going to install Bard, which is a free WordPress theme. Next, you're gonna learn how to set up your blog for success by installing plugins and creating a child theme for your blog. 
Then you're going to learn how to design your blog and create a truly unique experience for your blog's visitors. Then I'll show you how to create and publish a media-rich blog post that will keep your audience engaged and coming back for more. You're also going to learn how to use HTML and CSS to customize your blog's overall look and feel. I'm also going to show you how to install an Aweber opt-in form so that you can start to grow your audience with email marketing. You're also going to learn how to implement multiple revenue streams and monetize your blog so that you're setting yourself up to earn a passive income online. After that, I'll show you how to create a sitemap, set up your Google Search Console account, and implement SEO strategies so that you can work your way towards getting on the first page of Google's search results. And finally, you're going to learn how to secure your blog and keep it safe from outside threats. Next, I want to go over what your investment will be whenever it comes to building your WordPress blog. Now, if you're serious about turning your blog into a business, then there will be some initial costs up front. But if you set up your blog the way I show you in this video, you can monetize it and potentially have it pay for itself and much, much more. However, we all start somewhere and in the beginning, you'll need to invest in yourself in order to be successful. So the first cost is your web hosting. And for this video, we'll be using Bluehost. Now, we'll cover all the specifics and features of Bluehost in greater detail a little later on in the video, but just know that Bluehost is a great fit for WordPress bloggers, and web hosting is an essential part of starting any type of blog or website. Plus, all Blog Whippin viewers get a special offer for their web hosting for only $2.95 per month. Next is the free WordPress theme Bard. Now, the free version of this theme obviously won't cost you any money. However, there is a pro version of the theme that includes even more features that you can purchase for a one-time fee of only $29. And if you're interested in checking out the pro version of Bard, feel free to visit my affiliate link in the show notes titled Pro Bard. Finally, there's your email marketing platform. And for this video, we'll be using Aweber. Now, I personally use Aweber on blogwithben.com, and I've seen a ton of success from it, so that's why I'm recommending it in this video. And regardless of what email marketing platform you choose to use, if you want to grow your audience and send emails to them, you're going to have to pay in order to use that service. MailChimp, Aweber, Constant Contact, they all cost money to use their email marketing services, and Aweber is one of the most affordable at only $19 per month. I should also mention that you get a 30-day free trial of Aweber if you use the link in this video. So you can test it out for free for a whole month before deciding whether or not it's the right fit for you and your blog. Now, when it's all said and done, if you decide to follow this video step by step, your initial investment will only be around $100. But remember, you're also going to learn how to monetize your blog so that you could start earning a passive income with your digital platform. And like I said, I know that there are some initial investments with the premium WordPress blog, but if you monetize your blog, you can have it work for you and can potentially have it pay for itself. Plus, the blog monetization techniques and strategies that you're going to learn in this video is the exact blueprint I use on blogwithbin.com. And as you can see, in a little over a year and a half, I was able to generate $70,000 from just one digital product. And this has definitely paid for all of my blog's expenses and changed my life in the process. So if you're on the fence about investing in your WordPress blog, I totally understand that. But just know that in this video, I'm going to show you how to monetize your blog so that you could potentially earn a return on your investment and have your blog pay for itself. Finally, this is all important because blogging has become a billion dollar industry. And the sooner you get your foot in the door, the quicker you'll be able to start generating revenue with your blog. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, now in this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to set up your very own self-hosted WordPress blog using Bluehost Web Hosting. I personally use both of these services for the majority of my web properties, and just know that after this tutorial, you're gonna have an extremely powerful digital platform that will allow you to scale and monetize your blog very quickly. Now, this tutorial will be taking you through my Bluehost affiliate link, and all that means is that if you decide to make a purchase, I'll earn a small commission. But by doing so, you're helping me keep my blog up and running, and you're helping me provide for my family. So for that, I truly thank you. Plus, this link is an exclusive offer for WordPress users. Bluehost has partnered with WordPress, 
And as you'll see in a few moments, this exclusive offer is packed with some amazing features for WordPress bloggers. It really is a phenomenal partnership that they've developed. Additionally, whenever you sign up for Bluehost web hosting, you'll gain access to their new WordPress expert support service called BlueFlash. This is a totally free service for all Bluehost customers that provides you with your very own personal WordPress expert to help you get your blog initially configured and launched. Now, you're gonna learn everything you need to know and more in this video tutorial, and I pride myself on being available to anyone who has questions or needs some extra help setting up their blog, but this Blue Flash launch service is just an added layer of support where you can actually talk to someone on the phone in real time if you come across any issues while building your WordPress blog. And one final note, this offer comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so rest assured that you can get a full refund if you need to. With that being said, let's get started. So the first step in this entire process is to sign up for web hosting. And in order for you to take advantage of Bluehost's exclusive offer for WordPress users, you have a couple options. If you're watching this video on YouTube, simply click on the Bluehost link within the show notes below the video titled Access to Bluehost's Exclusive Offer. And again, that's an affiliate link. Or if you're watching this video on blogwithbin.com, simply click on the Resources tab in the menu at the top of the screen. And this will take you to my Resources page. And as you can see, I list all of the tools and resources that I use on a daily basis that have helped me find success online. Now, whenever you have some extra time, I really encourage you to take a closer look at everything on this page. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be setting up your web hosting account. So to get started, simply click on the Try Bluehost button. And again, this button is also an affiliate link. All right, as you can see, this is a special offer for WordPress users. By using my affiliate link, you'll get a free domain, a free SSL certificate, an automatic WordPress install, access to Bluehost's new user dashboard, which is an amazing new feature, and 24 seven technical support all for only $2.95 per month. I should also mention that the $2.95 per month price is exclusively for Blog with Ben viewers only. So just know that you're saving a ton of money on web hosting by using my affiliate link. Plus, because this package is optimized for WordPress, your web host servers come with proven performance, reliability, and functionality that will give your blog a strong foundation for long-term success. Bluehost web hosting, coupled with WordPress blogging software, is by far one of the strongest blogging platforms available. So, to get started, simply click the green Choose Plan button, and that's gonna take us to the Select Your Plan page. And as you can see, you have three separate options here the basic, plus, and choice plus plans. And again, this is all personal preference and your choice really depends on how you're running your blog or online business. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the basic plan, which allows us to host one domain. And I should also mention that Bluehost gives us this domain for free, which is pretty cool. But if you plan on having multiple domains and websites, then I highly recommend going with either the plus or choice plus plan. This allows you to host unlimited websites. However, for this tutorial, we're going to be using the basic plan. So once you've decided on what plan you're going to use, go ahead and click the green select button. And that will take us to the domain setup page where you have a couple of different options. On the left hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you don't have a domain name. And on the right hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you do have an existing domain. Now I should mention that if you're signing up with an existing domain, there are a couple of extra steps that you'll need to do in order to transfer that domain. However, for this tutorial, we'll be signing up with our brand new free domain name. So if you have an existing domain, you'll still follow along in this video, but after you're done with this tutorial, there's still a few extra steps that you'll need to do in order for your blog to be hosted with Bluehost. Luckily, I've made a separate video that walks you through that entire process. It's titled How to Point a Domain to Bluehost, and you can access it in the show notes below this video. All right, so we're going to be using our brand new free domain. So on the left-hand side of the screen under New Domain, just type in your desired domain name and click the blue Next button.
And then if your domain is available, you'll get a green notification on the next screen letting you know that it is, and you can begin to create your Bluehost account. So this is the account information page and it's pretty self-explanatory, but this is where you'll enter your account package and credit card information. Now, if you have a Gmail or Google account, you can bypass this part and just sign in with Google. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna create a new account through Bluehost. So I'm actually gonna blur it out while I enter in my personal information, but I wanted to take a second to reiterate why Bluehost is so helpful to the WordPress community and their users. For starters, Bluehost has a 24-7 WordPress support system in place, so if you ever need any additional help or have any questions, they are there for you. They also have a one-click WordPress installation feature, which we're going to go over in a couple of minutes, but this makes getting your blog up and running a cinch. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked, so if for any reason you're unsatisfied with the service, you can get your money back. And finally, Bluehost is actually recommended by WordPress. Bluehost and WordPress have worked closely together since 2005 to create a hosting platform that's ideal for running a WordPress website. So you honestly cannot go wrong. Now the next thing you're gonna select is your package information. And as you can see from the drop down menu, you have a couple of options here. One thing to keep in mind about the pricing is that the longer the subscription, the lower the monthly price. So if you opt to purchase the 36 month plan, your monthly rate will only be $2.95 per month and you'll lock in that rate for three years. However, if you purchase a shorter monthly plan, then your monthly rate will be a little higher. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be going with the 12 month plan, which is only $4.95 per month, but that's still a great deal. You're getting a ton of value for less than a cup of coffee per month. Then once you've selected your plan, you have the option of adding some additional features to your plan. These are 100% optional, but I highly recommend that you at least select the domain privacy protection add-on. Reason being, anytime you purchase a domain, your personal information is viewable on the Whois directory, meaning anyone can find your personal info online. However, with the domain privacy protection add-on, it will keep your personal information safe and secure and will make it undetectable in the Whois directory. So it's totally worth the 99 cents per month, in my opinion. Now, the site lock security, code guard, SEO tools, and Office 365 mailbox are all optional. But for this tutorial, we're only going to add on the domain privacy protection. So you can uncheck the boxes next to the other add-ons. Now, another thing I want to point out is that Bluehost is extremely transparent with their pricing, which is why I use and recommend them. And as you can see, they display your price as you're deciding on which package to purchase. This also gives you peace of mind and the upfront pricing assures you that there will be no surprises with your bill. All right, next, you're gonna select your payment option and enter your billing information. And you can either pay by credit card or PayPal, which is pretty convenient. But one thing I should mention is that you'll be billed annually. And all this means is that you'll be billed once a year for your hosting plan. And as you can see from my Bluehost email receipt, I purchased the basic 12 month starter plan that comes with a free SSL certificate and a free domain name, but I purchased the domain privacy protection add-on and my total cost is only $71.28 per year, which comes out to $5.94 per month. That's less than a cup of coffee per month to have your own website. And there are design companies and freelancers that charge anywhere from $400 to $10,000 to build a WordPress website. But we're doing it for less than $100. That is unreal and a huge savings. And once you've entered all the required payment information, click the small box confirming that you've read and agreed to the terms of service, cancellation policy, and acknowledge the privacy policy, and then click the green submit button. And the next page is the account confirmation page showing your receipt. And one thing to note is that Bluehost conveniently emails you all of this information. And again, as you can see from my confirmation email, Bluehost provides all the specifics of my hosting account within this email. So be sure to keep an eye out for it and always keep this information in a safe and secure location. Now, the next thing you want to do is create a password for your account. So to get started, click the create account button. and then you'll be taken to the page where you'll manage your password. So where it says create password, simply enter your desired password and be sure to make it strong yet unique. And then right below that, retype your new password. 
Now, I highly recommend that you copy and paste the password in a safe and secure location like an Excel spreadsheet, separate file, or a Google Doc. It's just a good idea to always have a backup of your password. Plus, you're going to need it in a few moments to log into your new account, so keep it handy. All right, after you've created your password, you should get two green checkmark icons letting you know that the passwords match. Next, go ahead and check the small box confirming that you've read and agree to the Bluehost privacy policy in terms of service and click the Create Account button. And beautiful, your account is ready to go and it's time to log in. So click the Go To Login button. And this will take you to the Bluehost login portal. Now, anytime you want to access the back end of Bluehost and your WordPress blog, you'll do so through this portal. And to get here, simply go to bluehost.com and click on the login link at the top of the screen. And that will bring you to the login portal, which is what you're looking at right now. Now, one thing to pay attention to is to make sure that you have hosting login selected. There's an option to log into your webmail, but we haven't set that up yet. So if you're wanting to access your blog, make sure the hosting login button is selected. Then simply enter your email or domain name as the username, and then enter the password that you created when you signed up with Bluehost, and click the login button. Next, you'll be presented with a couple of quick onboarding steps. In the first step, Bluehost will ask a couple of quick questions to get a better idea of what type of website you're creating. So the first question, what kind of site are you creating? We're creating a blog, obviously, so select blog from the first dropdown. Next question, what type is it? And for this video, we're creating a lifestyle blog, so select lifestyle from that dropdown. Then who are you creating a site for? For this video, I'm assuming you're creating the blog for yourself, so select Myself and click the Continue button. Next, Bluehost has a few more questions and will ask you to create your site title and tagline. And your site title and tagline are used in a few different places on your blog, one being in the tab of the browser. And this helps the reader distinguish which tab is what, and it creates a good user experience as well. Next, it's used in the search engine snippets for your search results. This is important when it comes to SEO, and it also creates a good user experience. So Bluehost is conveniently taking care of this step by making it a part of the onboarding process. You used to have to change the title and tagline in the back end of WordPress, but now, where it says, what do you want to name your site? Go ahead and enter the name of your blog. And for this tutorial, I'm creating a lifestyle blog, so I'm going to name it Laptop Lifestyle. Then directly below that, add a catchy tagline. And I'm just going to say, live in the good life. There we go. Next, you'll be asked if you want the ability to sell anything. So if you plan on having an online store integrated within your blog, go ahead and flip this switch. But for this tutorial, we're not. So we'll leave it as is. And then mark how comfy you are with creating websites. And again, don't worry what you put here. I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know step by step in this video and then click the Continue to Theme Selection button. Next, you'll be presented with some WordPress themes you can choose from. Go ahead and click the Skip This Step link since we'll be installing our own theme a little later on in the video. And congratulations, you're in. What you're looking at right now is Bluehost's new user experience. This is what you'll see every time you log into your account, and Bluehost has really streamlined the entire onboarding WordPress experience, making things easy to find and understand for anyone who is new to managing a blog. And take a look at this. There are companies out there that are charging nearly $400 per month to do what I'm going to show you how to do with Bluehost and WordPress in this very video. Again, this is one of the many reasons why I love the partnership that Bluehost and WordPress have created, and it's also why I'm a huge fan of their new backend interface. And speaking of the new interface, this is what you'll see every time you log in, and this is also how you'll access your WordPress blog, which has automatically been installed. 
Now, the first thing I want to address is the domain. You're probably wondering why it's looking all weird and funky. Well, that's because this is a temporary domain. And in order for your new domain to display correctly, you'll need to verify your email address and activate your domain. And Bluehost makes this process super simple and sends you an email where all you have to do is click a button. However, please be aware that you'll only have to do this if you registered your domain with Bluehost. If you registered your domain with a service like GoDaddy, then you'll need to follow a few additional steps in order for your domain to work with Bluehost. Again, luckily I've created a video that walks you through that process and the link is in the show notes of this tutorial titled Point Domain to Bluehost. Anyways, keep your eye out for this email from Bluehost. You'll need to verify your email with Bluehost within 14 days or your domain will be deactivated. So I'm going to click the verify your email button And as you can see, the email has been verified with the Whois directory and your new domain should show up shortly. But like I said, if you're still seeing a weird temporary domain whenever you go to your Bluehost customer portal or visit your blog, don't freak out. It will be automatically updated by Bluehost shortly after you verify your email address and activate your domain within that email that we just went over. Okay, another thing I wanna point out, which is a new feature this year, is the list to launch. So let's go back to our home page by clicking the home tab on the left hand side of the screen. And Bluehost has tried to help streamline the blog setup process by presenting you with a checklist of tasks, which they call their list to launch, where you can complete each task before you launch your blog. My only issue with this is that there isn't really any context and the list can seem a little overwhelming to someone who is just starting out. That's why I recommend that you don't worry about it and just follow my steps in this video. I can assure you that by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a beautiful, professional, and secure WordPress blog. Okay, next, let's start building your blog. So like I previously mentioned, one of the many reasons why I use and recommend Bluehost is that they've streamlined your blog's setup process and automatically install WordPress for you. So to get started with WordPress and access the backend of your blog, click the WordPress button. And just a quick heads up, it may take a few seconds to load if this is your first time logging into WordPress. And congratulations, you're in. You now have one of the most powerful and robust blogging platforms available. Now, before we start making changes, you may see some pop-ups within your dashboard. You can go ahead and close these since I'm gonna be helping you out. And then what you're looking at right now is your WordPress dashboard. This is basically home base for building your blog. Now again, it may seem like a lot if you're just starting out, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know step by step. And one quick thing I wanna point out is that Bluehost created a simplified version of the WordPress dashboard that you can access by clicking on the Bluehost tab on the left-hand side of the screen. Bluehost has basically consolidated the most important parts of building a blog into their own Bluehost dashboard, so that anytime you wanna make a change, update or publish a blog post, you can do so through the Bluehost dashboard as well. And we'll cover all that a little later on in the video, but for now, you should be proud and excited that your blog is built on such a solid foundation. Okay, moving on. Next, let's install our free WordPress theme. Now in this section of the tutorial, we're gonna go over how to install a free WordPress theme to your blog. And the right WordPress theme can go a long way in your blog's success. And this portion of the video will show you how to turn a boring layout into a sleek, innovative, and mobile responsive design. And for this video, we're gonna be installing a free theme. So the first thing you need to do is hover your mouse over appearance on the left-hand side of the screen and click on themes. And this will bring you to your theme management menu. This is where you can add new themes, change your current theme, and search for additional themes all from this page. Now, we're gonna be adding a new theme. So to get started, simply click on the Add New Theme icon. And this is gonna bring us to the WordPress theme directory. And basically, this is where we can browse through the thousands of different themes that WordPress has to offer. And if you look in the upper left-hand side of the screen, you can see that WordPress offers some filters to help you find that perfect theme. 
This lets you break the themes down by featured, popular, latest, and there's even a featured filter section. This is where you can get even more specific if you have a particular feature or requirement of your theme in mind. It's a great way to filter through the themes and find exactly what you're looking for. Another way to find a theme is to use their search function. This works the same as any search bar, and it's a great way to find a theme if you already know the name of it like we do. So we'll just type in Bard in the search bar, and that will bring up the search results. And there it is. Now, you do have the ability to check out a demo of the theme by hovering your mouse over the snapshot there and click on details and preview. And this will give you a good idea of how the theme behaves. But we've already previewed the theme at the beginning of the video, so let's just install it by clicking the install button. And once it's installed, go ahead and click the activate button. And this will officially activate the theme and make it visible on your blog. You can see that the theme is now listed as active in your themes management menu and is being used as the parent theme for your blog. So let's check this out really quick and see how it looks. So to visit your site, simply hover your mouse over your site title in the upper left hand side of the screen and click on visit site. and beautiful. Now we obviously have a lot of work to do, but you have successfully installed the Bard parent theme that will act as the foundation for your new lifestyle blog. Nice work. Okay, before we move on, let me show you some useful resources for this theme. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard by hovering your mouse over your site title in the upper left hand side of the screen and click on dashboard. Then after you install the Bard theme, you should see some flash notifications in your WordPress dashboard. And if you click on the welcome page link here, you'll be taken to the themes about Bard menu. You can also access this by hovering your mouse over appearance and clicking on about Bard. And this is just a helpful resource created by the themes developers that can give you some insight on what is possible with the theme. They have some help documentation, video tutorials, useful plugins, support, and much more. Now, I'm going to be walking you through the entire process of building this beautiful lifestyle blog, but this About Bard resource section is a great safety net to have if you ever run into any issues along the way or if you can't get in touch with me. All right, moving on. Next, let's make some adjustments to your blog so that you can set yourself up for success. In this section of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your WordPress blog for success. Not only will you be getting some hands-on experience with your WordPress dashboard, but you'll also be laying the foundation for a successful blog. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of building your blog, there are a few house cleaning tips that I always recommend doing prior to publishing your first blog post. These tips are merely recommendations and by no means do you have to set up your blog exactly like I do. But from my experience, these tips have been very beneficial to my blog's overall growth strategy and they've helped me achieve a much stronger blogging foundation in the process. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk you through those tips and show you the five things that I always do before I start a blog. So let's take a closer look at what those five things are. The first thing I recommend doing is to check the permalink settings. This is where we'll review and confirm the permalink structure to make sure our URLs are structured for SEO. This will also improve the aesthetics, usability, and forward compatibility of your links. If you're shaking your head right now, no worries, we'll cover it all a little later on in the video. Number two is the update Gravatar. This is where we'll update the profile and image that will be used for your Gravatar account. And we'll get into the specifics of why it's important a little later on in the video as well, but your Gravatar is a key component to your WordPress platform. Number three is to delete unnecessary plugins. WordPress pre-installs some pretty unnecessary plugins. For example, the Hello Dolly plugin displays Hello Dolly song lyrics at the top right hand side of your screen in your WordPress dashboard. It's virtually useless and eats up some space, so this tip will show you how to get rid of the plugins that you're not going to use. Number four is to install recommended plugins. And I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding to your blog's infrastructure. This tip will cover the plugins I always use before I start a blog. Finally, number five, change display name. 
I'll show you how to change the way your name is displayed whenever you author a blog post. This gives you some flexibility when it comes to how your name is publicly displayed online. So with that being said, let's start with number one and check the permalink structure of your blog. Okay, so in this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna actually learn our way around the WordPress dashboard and set up a strong foundation before we start putting content online. It's easy to get excited once you finally get set up, but a lot of people jump the gun and start publishing content without getting their digital foundation set up properly. It's extremely important that we set ourselves up for success before we publish our first blog post. So before we start publishing content, let's take a closer look at the Bluehost and WordPress dashboards and set a strong foundation for our blog. So the first thing we're gonna do is reconfigure our permalink settings. Now, if you're brand new to blogging, you're probably unfamiliar with what a permalink is, so let me give you a quick rundown of what permalinks are and why they're important. By definition, a permalink is a static hyperlink to a particular web page or blog post. And all it really is though, is it's the URL of the content that you're publishing on your WordPress blog. And these are the links that you're gonna share with the world whenever you wanna share your content. And these are the URLs that people will enter into their browser whenever they wanna view one of your pages. And that's why it's very important that these links are set up properly. Now, previously, WordPress's preset permalink settings weren't user-friendly or beneficial to SEO. However, while I was recording and creating this tutorial, I noticed that my permalinks were set up properly and I didn't have to change anything in the back end. And if we go to a sample post and look at the permalink, you can see that it's using the post title in the URL. And this creates a clean link that is optimized for the search engines because it's a URL structure that contains keywords only. Now, to ensure that your permalink settings are like this, simply hover your mouse over settings on the left-hand side of the screen and click on permalinks. And this will bring you to the permalink settings menu. And as you can see, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalinks. Now, the permalink setting I highly recommend you use is post name, and this generates a short, memorable and SEO friendly URL that's based off of the title of each of your blog posts and pages. So for example, if your blog post is titled 10 cheap ways to travel the world, the URL for that post would be benstravelblog.com forward slash 10 free ways to travel the world. It's much better than the default setting that WordPress used to start you out with. So just make sure that you have post name selected as your permalink setting here. If it isn't, simply select post name and click the save changes button. Again, this will ensure that your permalinks are user friendly and optimized for the search engines. Okay, now that we've set up our permalink structure, let's move on to tip number two, which is updating your Gravatar. All right, so if you're new to Gravatars, let me break it down for you. Your Gravatar is a globally recognized avatar. It's basically an image that follows you from site to site, appearing beside your name whenever you do things like comment or post on a blog. Even if you turned your comments off, it's always a good idea to have a Gravatar to enhance your online presence and increase your brand recognition. Here is a quick example of my Gravatar. As you can see, the Gravatar displays my image next to my comment. And simply put, Gravatars help identify your comments on blogs and web forums. Here's how it works. Basically, all you do is you upload an image and create your profile just once. And then whenever you participate in any Gravatar enabled site, your Gravatar image will automatically follow you there. It's a free service for site owners, developers, and users, and it's automatically included in every WordPress account. Now to see if you already have a Gravatar, simply go to Users on the left-hand side of the screen at the dashboard. So hover your mouse over Users and click on Your Profile. And this brings you to the User Profile Settings. Then scroll down to where it says Profile Picture and if your actual picture is showing, then you have a Gravatar. But chances are that you don't and you're just seeing a silhouette, especially if this is your first WordPress blog. But setting up Gravatars in your site is very easy to do. You sign up once, upload a picture, and anytime you comment on any Gravatar supported blog or website, your Gravatar comes along for the ride. So to get started, head over to Gravatar.com. You can just go ahead and click on that Gravatar link and that'll take you there. Perfect. Then to get started, you're gonna to wanna to click on the Create Your Own Gravatar button. There we go. Now, you'll need to sign up for a free WordPress.com account. 
And I'm not going to walk you through the entire sign up process because it's pretty self explanatory, but I will show you how to make sure that your Gravatar shows up on your blog. So I'm just going to sign into my WordPress.com account. And remember, this is different than the WordPress.org account. The only reason we're using the WordPress.com is to create our Gravatar. All right, so once you've created an account and set up the email and image you'll be using for the Gravatar, you'll need to add the URL that will be associated with the Gravatar. This will ensure that the image you use in the Gravatar will work on your blog. So the first thing you wanna do is click on my profile at the top of the screen. And then on the right hand side of the screen, click on the websites link. Then click on the add website icon and simply add the URL and title of your blog. There we go. And then click the Save Website button. And you'll notice that we now have a new website associated with this Gravatar. So let's check it out. So go ahead and click on the site that you just added to the profile. And this will bring us back to the home page of our blog. Then we'll need to get back to the user profile and the WordPress dashboard. So in the upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your site title and click on dashboard. And this will bring you back to the WordPress dashboard. Then to get back to the user profile, hover your mouse over users on the left hand side of the screen and click on your profile. And then if we scroll down, it looks like our Gravatar picture is not there. Well, that's because we need to connect the blog to the wordpress.com account with an email address. So where it says contact info, simply enter the email address that you used to create the wordpress.com account then directly below that, add the URL of your blog. And then at the bottom of the screen, click the Update Profile button. Then the final step is we need to verify the email address that we just added. So within a few moments, you should receive an email from WordPress asking you to confirm the new email address. Go ahead and click the link to confirm. And then back at the user profile, after you've confirmed, if you scroll down, you'll see that you now have a WordPress avatar set up and ready to represent you across the web. Nice work. Moving on. So for this part of the setup process, we're going to delete some of the plugins that come pre-installed with your WordPress blog. Now, that's not to say that the pre-installed plugins aren't useful, but for the purpose of this video, these plugins will just take up valuable space that can be better utilized for other aspects of your blog. You aren't required to delete these plugins if you don't want to, but since we're not using them in this tutorial, I'm gonna delete them to save some space. So on the left-hand side of your screen in the dashboard, hover your mouse over plugins and click on installed plugins. And this will bring you to your plugin manager. This is where you can add, delete, and deactivate plugins on your WordPress blog. Now, like I previously mentioned, WordPress starts you off with some unnecessary plugins for what we're gonna be doing in this video. So to get rid of these plugins and free up some space, we'll need to deactivate and delete the plugins we wanna get rid of. So first things first, click on the deactivate link under each plugin you wanna get rid of. And for this tutorial, we're deactivating the Optin Monster plugin because the other two plugins are already deactivated. And you should get a notification letting you know that the plugin has been deactivated. Then to delete the plugins, simply check the boxes next to the Akismet, Hello Dolly, and Optin Monster plugins. Then towards the top of the screen, Click on the Bulk Actions drop-down menu and select Delete. Then click the Apply button. And you may get a final notice asking you if you're sure you want to delete them. Go ahead and click OK. 
and our plugins will disappear one by one. Perfect. Next, we're gonna install the recommended plugins. Now, like I said in the intro, I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding. Now, if you're new to the idea of plugins, WordPress plugins are bits of software that can be uploaded to your blog. Their purpose is to extend and expand the functionality of your WordPress site. And there are literally thousands of plugins to choose from. I'm also gonna list out each plugin you should install on a Google Doc, and I'll link to that Google Doc in the show notes below this video. That way you can always come back to the video and easily access the plugins that I recommend for this type of blog. All right, so to start adding plugins, go to the plugin management menu if you're not already there. Then to add a new plugin, we're gonna to wanna to click on the add new button at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to where you can search through the available plugins. So on the right hand side of the screen where it says search plugins, let's type in the name of the first plugin we're going to install. And before you start typing, make sure that keyword is selected in the drop down. This ensures that our search results are accurate. So go ahead and type Yoast, Y O A S T. And once the search results populate, it should be the very first plugin listed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Yoast SEO plugin is my number one recommended plugin when it comes to SEO and starting any type of blog. It's an essential component to building a strong SEO foundation and will help take care of a lot of the technical aspects of SEO so that you could focus on what's important, your blog. So to install and activate this plugin, simply click the Install Now button. And once it's installed, you'll be able to activate it from the same screen. So go ahead and click the Activate button. And then you'll be taken back to your plugin management menu where you can see that the plugin has been successfully added to your list and is activated. Now, once the Yoast SEO plugin is activated, you may get a notification from Yoast telling you that there is issues concerning your SEO. You can go ahead and ignore this for now because we'll address it when we configure the plugin later on in the video. All right, let's add another plugin. So go ahead and click the add new button at the top of the screen. So follow the same steps as before and type simple social icons in the search bar. This is the plugin that we're gonna be using for our social media strategy, specifically to grow our audience. And there it is, so go ahead and follow the same steps as before. Click the Install Now button, and then click Activate. And we're good to go. All right, let's add another plugin. And again, follow the same steps as before. The next plugin we're gonna add is the Smash Balloon Social Photo Feed. This plugin was formerly the Instagram feed and is what we'll use to display our Instagram feed at the bottom of your blog. It's super easy to implement and allows you to present your feed in a way that you typically have to pay for in order to have that feature. So let's install and activate this plugin. Next, we're going to add the recent posts with thumbnail widget. And again, follow the same steps as before. So click the add new button. And then in the search field, type recent posts with thumbnails widget. And this plugin lets you display your most recent posts with titles, thumbnails, author info, etc., and is a great tool that will allow you to show off your posts in the sidebar and footer of your blog. It's super easy to use and lets you display your content in some cool and unique ways. So go ahead and install and then activate this plugin. And then follow the same steps as before and let's add our next plugin, which is the anti-spam plugin. So just like before, click the add new button Then in the search field, type in Titan Anti-Spam. 
And this is actually my replacement for the Akismet plugin because the Akismet plugin started charging you $5 per month if you ran ads or promoted things on your blog. However, this anti-spam plugin does the exact same thing. It's free and it protects the comments of your blog from spammers. So let's install it. Go ahead and click the install now button. And then activate it. There we go. And one final thing I want to cover before we move on is the GDPR plugin. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's basically a new European law stating that if you have web traffic coming to your site from the European Union and you're collecting their data like their email address, IP address, and so on, then you need to disclose to the visitor any data collection you may be doing. I know it sounds kind of scary, data collection, but the majority of sites on the internet do it. And if you're going to have traffic to your blog from the EU, then I recommend you add one more plugin called the GDPR Cookie Compliance. It's free and will help your blog stay GDPR are compliant. Now I'm not going to add it to this tutorial, but I'll put a link to the plugin in the Google Doc in the show notes so that if you are planning on having traffic come from the EU, then you could stay legally compliant. All right, we've now installed and activated all of the essential plugins that we'll be using for this blog. A little later in the video, we'll configure them, but for now, let's move on to the next part of the setup process. Next, we're going to change how our name is displayed on our blog. And what I mean by this is whenever we first installed WordPress, Bluehost automatically creates your profile's username using the email address that you signed up with. And this username is also used for your display name, which is the name that's shown whenever you author a blog post. That's not really cool if you want the world to see your username and your email address. And it's also somewhat unprofessional looking. So. When I say that we're changing the display name, we're essentially changing the way our name is displayed on our blog. So the first thing you wanna do in the upper right hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over where it says howdy and click on edit my profile. And this will bring you to your profile settings page where you have the ability to customize certain aspects of your profile. One of them being how your name is publicly displayed on your blog. So there are two things I always change. First, I change the nickname and then the display name. And you'll notice that the nickname is required and then we'll be able to use whatever nickname that we create as the display name. So if you look towards the middle of the screen where it says nickname, I'm going to enter in the name that I wanna use for my display name. And remember, this is going to be used for the byline of all your blog posts. So try to keep it professional. And then directly below that, where it says display name publicly as, simply select the nickname that you just created from the drop down menu. Then scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the update profile button. And as you can see, the display name has been changed. And now every time you author a blog post, this name will be used instead of your username. All right, moving on. Next, we're going to configure the plugins that we just installed. So the first part of the design process, believe it or not, is configuring the plugins we just installed. Reason being, they play a big part in how our blog is presented online. Plus, by configuring your plugins, it will allow you to have a much more efficient and secure digital platform for starting a blog. All right, so the first plugin we're going to configure is the Yoast SEO plugin. And this plugin is one of my most highly recommended plugins and it's helped my blog rank in the search engines. And best of all, it's free. So to get started, go to the Yoast settings page. And to get there, on the left-hand side of the screen in your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over the Yoast SEO icon and click on general. And this will bring you to the settings page. And if this is your first time using the plugin, you may see a few notifications. The first is a problem stating that you're blocking access to robots. This is a normal WordPress default setting and we'll take care of that at the end of the video. Then there also might be a few other notifications that have to do with promos and the Google Search Console. We're not gonna worry about the promos in this video, so you can go ahead and disregard these, but we'll set up the Google Search Console settings a little later on in the video as well. So you can skip these for now and we'll just worry about configuring the plugin. So to get started, click the Configuration Wizard link. 
and this will bring you to the Yoast SEO configuration wizard. And the first step is determining which environment your blog is in. Reason being, the plugin wants to know if your site should be indexed by the search engines. And when they say environment, all they want to know is whether or not your blog is live or under construction. So since we're in the process of building our site, we'll select option B. But if your site is already live, then go ahead and select option A. Either way, I'm going to show you how to activate it once your blog is ready to publish. Additionally, once your blog is ready to launch, we're going to come back to the Yoast configuration wizard and select option A. But like I said, since we're in the beginning phase of building your blog, we don't want to be indexed. So we'll select option B and click the next button. Next is site type. And this is pretty obvious. You'll want to select blog and click the next button. Next, Yoast is trying to determine whether or not you're an organization or a person. So if you're an organization, type in the name of your organization, upload your logo and add your social network URLs. But if you're a person, select person, and then the drop down menu will pull whatever you've set your display name to. So if you want to change how the search engines display your name, you'll need to actually change that in your WordPress profile. Then once you're ready to move on, click the next button. And then next is the search engine visibility. This is where you can configure what content types you'd like the search engines to index. And unless you have specific requirements, I recommend leaving this as is and click the next button. And then next is the multiple authors section. And if you're going to have multiple people writing blog posts, select yes. And if it's just you select no and click the next button. And that will bring us to the title settings. This is where you can change the website name that Yoast will display to the search engines and the symbol it will use as your title separator. I like it as is, so I'm going to click the next button and leave everything alone. The next Yoast wants to know if you'd like to subscribe to their newsletter. I recommend signing up. It's super helpful and keeps you up to date with everything that's going on in the world of SEO. Then they have some upgrade options and further trainings. We can skip this for now and click next. And congrats, your Yoast SEO plugin has been configured and now Yoast will take care of all of the technical aspects of SEO for your blog. This is gonna improve your blog's overall performance in the search results and it will give you some peace of mind whenever it comes to SEO. All right, so go ahead and click the close link button. Now you'll probably see a notification for a huge SEO problem after you configure the Yoast SEO settings, but don't worry about that now. We'll fix that whenever our blog is ready to launch. However, there is one more thing we want to do for SEO before we move on, and that's add our social accounts to our profile. This will help the search engine bots know what social networks our blog is associated with. And again, this is important because when the search engines crawl your site and see that you're connected to multiple popular social networks with followings, it can give you more authority and help to boost your search engine ranking. So to let the search engines know that you have various social profiles, you'll need to update your user profile. So on the left hand side of the screen in your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over users and click on your profile. Then scroll down a bit and you'll see multiple fields where you can enter your website's URL along with the links to your social profiles. And then once you've filled them out, click the update profile button and the search engines will now know what social profiles you're associated with. And one more thing about Yoast before we move on, we could literally spend a whole hour doing a deep dive on all the features of Yoast and we'll come back to the plugin quite a bit during this tutorial. But whenever you have some extra time, I really encourage you to read through some of the free Yoast resources that you can access here. This free SEO training will ensure that you have a solid understanding of SEO and how you can better position your blog to be optimized for the search engines. 
So check these links out whenever you have some extra time. All right, moving on. Next, let's create your child theme. All right, next, we're gonna create a child theme from scratch. Now, in my previous tutorials, I've always used a plugin when creating a child theme. However, the plugins that I've used in the past have started to charge money for some of the features that were typically free. And I'm not knocking the plugins developers for trying to monetize their plugin, but when you're on a budget, these added expenses can start to stack up. So that's why I've decided to show you how to create your own child theme from scratch using your cPanel. Also, if you truly think it's too difficult to create your own child theme, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you out. But you should be able to do it if you follow my instructions step by step. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do is access the cPanel, and this is just your control panel. And you'll do that in your Bluehost customer portal. So to get there, hover your mouse over Bluehost and click on back to Bluehost. Then once back at the customer portal, you're going to go to the advanced section of your cPanel. So click on the advanced tab on the left-hand side of the screen. And this will bring you to your cPanel, commonly referred to as the control panel. And the control panel serves as the command center where you can access your accounts, manage your domains, install scripts and applications, back up your site, and much, much more. And for this section of the tutorial, we're going to access some files within the Bard WordPress theme. So the way to do that is to click on the file manager icon within your cPanel, and this will bring you to where all the files for every one of your sites is stored. This is like the skeleton of your blog. All a website really is is a collection of files and code. So this is like the back end, back end of your blog. So the first thing you want to do is open your public HTML folder. So double click on the public HTML text there on the left hand side of the screen. And I only have one domain in this tutorial. So whenever I click on the public HTML file, it is automatically opening the root for my blog. But if you have multiple domains, you'll see each domain file listed on the right hand side of the screen. And make sure that you select the domain file you're using for your blog before moving on. Okay, since we're obviously creating a child theme, the next file we want to access is the theme. And that is located in the WP content file. So double click on the WP content file there. And that will open up all of the content files associated with your blog. Next, we'll want to open the themes files. So double click on the file icon next to where it says themes. And this will display the folders for every theme that you have installed on your blog. Then again, since we're creating a new child theme, we'll need to add a new child theme folder. So towards the top of your screen, click on the plus folder icon. And then you'll be prompted to name that folder. So we're going to name this bard-child. And be sure to add a dash between the words bard and child. Don't add a space. Make sure your file is named bard-child and click the create new folder button. Perfect. And our child theme folder is ready to go. Next, it's time to add some files to that folder. So go ahead and double click the folder icon next to where it says Bard Child. And this will bring you to the file directory for the child theme, which is currently empty. But we'll change that. So let's change that by adding a new style.css file. So on the upper left hand side of the screen, click on the plus file icon. And just like before, you'll be prompted to name the file. So name this file style.css and then click the create new file button. And this will create the style sheet for your child theme. This is going to tell the internet that it needs to look at this child theme's style sheet instead of the parent theme style sheet. It basically ensures that the CSS changes you make to your child theme don't get erased if there's an update to the parent theme. Next, you'll need to add a small snippet of code to this file that we just created. So head over to my code cheat sheet, and you can get there by clicking the link in the show notes titled Code Cheat Sheet. And the first section of the cheat sheet there titled Child Theme, go ahead and highlight that code and copy it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command-C on my keyboard. 
and pay attention to the text that is highlighted in red, you're going to need to change that in a few moments. Okay, now that we've copied the code from the cheat sheet, head back to your child theme folder and right click your mouse over the style.css file. And then from the pop-up menu, select edit. And then you'll be prompted to make a backup of the original file. You can dismiss this since our file is currently empty, so click the edit button to move forward. Next, you'll be taken to the actual file where we'll begin to edit it. And this is pretty straightforward. Simply paste the code that you just copied from the cheat sheet within the file like so. And then remember those portions of red text within the cheat sheet? You'll wanna make sure that you swap out the theme URI and the author URI with your domain. So it currently says benslifestyleblog.com. Go ahead and change that to whatever your domain is. Then you'll also wanna change the author's name to your own name and then change the description if you want. And then leave everything else as is. And in the upper right hand side of the screen, click the save changes button And success, you've just created your first child theme. So let's go ahead and close this. So click the close button. Now I know it doesn't look like a lot, but those simple changes you just made will play a huge part in the overall design of your blog as you begin to make changes to it in the future. Now there is one more thing I recommend doing. It's not a huge deal, but it makes things look a little nicer in your themes menu. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what I mean. So as you can see, each WordPress theme uses a snapshot of the theme to help distinguish between themes within your theme management menu. Again, this isn't a huge deal, but it's something you can do really quick if you'd like. So back at your child theme, I'm going to use the exact same image that the parent theme uses for the snapshot of the child theme. And to do that, we'll need to go to the parent theme. So click back at the top of the screen then within the theme directory, select the barred parent theme. And then find the file titled screenshot.png. Right click your mouse on it, select download. And then the file will download to your hard drive. Next, you'll need to upload that screenshot to your child theme. So go back again, click the back button at the top of the screen, and that should take you to your barred child theme directory. Then all you're going to do is upload that screenshot. So click the upload button, then select the snapshot image that we just downloaded from the parent theme. And then when it's ready, you'll see the green notification. So go ahead and click the back link. There we go. But I wanna do one thing that will clean it up. I'm gonna rename this file since there's a space in the new file name. Having spaces in a file name is not ideal. So right click the screenshot file and select rename and go ahead and rename it without using a space in the file name. There we go. And congrats, you just created your very own child theme from scratch. Now let's go check it out. So back at our Bluehost customer portal, let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. So click the WordPress button. And then hover your mouse over Appearance and click on Themes. And voila, our child theme and snapshot are looking great and ready to use. Now, if you're not seeing the snapshot right away, no worries. Sometimes it takes a little time for that image to populate. But rest assured that if you followed me step by step, 
your child theme will look like this in your theme management menu. All right, so before we activate the child theme, let's preview it and make sure everything's behaving correctly. So hover your mouse over the child theme and click the live preview button. And this will give you the opportunity to check everything out and make sure nothing breaks whenever you activate the child theme. And everything looks great and in place. Nice work. All right, let's activate and publish our child theme. So click the activate and publish button. And then let's exit out of our customization menu. And there we go. Our child theme is active and we now have a theme that mirrors the parent theme and preserves the custom code changes we're going to make a little later on in the video. Nice job. All right, moving on. So now that you've completed the Bluehost and WordPress setup process, you've installed activated and configured your plugins, and you've also installed and activated your child theme, this is when the fun begins. This is where you get to start customizing and designing your blog. And the first thing we're going to customize is the site title, tagline, logo, and site icon. Thankfully, WordPress makes this super simple to edit within the customization menu. So let's head over there right now by hovering your mouse over the site title and click on visit site. And as you can see, the Bard theme gives you the ability to showcase your blog's title and tagline within the header. This is a really cool feature that is easily customizable, and the theme gives you some great options when it comes to the look, feel, and overall design of this section of your blog. So, let's get started. In the upper left-hand side of the screen, if you click on the Customize link with that paintbrush icon, it will take you to your customization menu. This is where you'll be making most of the changes to your blog. Anytime you need to make a tweak or design change, you'll more than likely be doing it through the customization menu. And once opened, you'll see the menu items on the left-hand side of the screen. All of these tabs coordinate with a particular section or feature of your blog. And we're gonna be spending a lot of time here, so if it seems like a lot, no worries, you're gonna get really familiar with your customization menu and what it can do. Okay, so as you can see, the Bard theme takes your site title and tagline that we set up at the beginning of the video during our Bluehost setup and uses it within the header. But if you want to change that for any reason, you can do so in the Site Identity tab. So go ahead and click on that Site Identity tab and open it. And here you'll be presented with some different editing features for your blog's main header. Now for starters, and this is another reason why I love this theme, the developers have created bite-sized tutorials for various sections of the build process, and you can easily access each tutorial here within the customization menu. Now, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know in this video, but these little videos that the theme offers are great tools if you need a quick how-to session while you're building your blog. Okay, next you'll notice that within the Site Identity tab, you have the ability to add a logo, change the width of the text, change the site title and tagline text, remove the text altogether, add or remove social icons, and add a favicon, commonly referred to as a site icon. So first, let me show you how easy it is to change the site title and tagline text. With the site title and tagline fields, simply swap out the text with what you want it to say. Pretty straightforward. So it currently says laptop lifestyle, but to switch out some words here, remote lifestyle. As you can see that the header beautifully gets updated on the right hand side of the screen. Or we can change this to foodie lifestyle. If you're gonna start a food blog or maybe even lipstick lifestyle. If you're gonna have a beauty and fashion blog. Really the options are endless, but changing the site title and tagline are super easy to do within these two fields. The same thing goes for the tagline. If you want to change it, you can do so in that field, but I like it as is, so I'm going to leave it alone. Then directly below those fields, you have the ability to remove the site title and tagline altogether. Simply uncheck that box next to where it says display site title and tagline, and they'll disappear. This is useful if you have a header image that has font in it 
or if you want to use a logo. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to head over to canva.com and show you how to create a logo really quick. This website can help you create stunning graphics with their free design software and I use them quite a bit. You can get some high quality design elements from them for free and I'll put their link in the show notes below the video so you can use them to create your logo if you want. And after you sign up for a free Canva account to start creating, click the create a design button. And then we're creating a custom sized logo, so click on custom dimensions. Then you'll be prompted to enter the logo dimensions. And the Bard theme in WordPress recommends that your logo be 450 by 200 pixels. So go ahead and type in those dimensions and click on the create design button. And Canva goes to work and opens up your custom layout. Now, I've obviously already started designing, but you literally have hundreds of pre-made logo templates at your disposal to help get the design juices flowing. Canva is extremely flexible and easy to use. Just swap out the text to match your blog's title, and then change the colors with the click of the mouse to match your overall brand. And like I said, you have a ton of pre-made templates, elements, font styles to choose from and play with. I should also mention that this is free to use, but they do have a premium version available, which I purchased and I absolutely love. It's cut down the time I spend on graphic design by well over 50%. Okay, so after you've created your logo, in order to add it to your blog, head back to your customization menu and in the site identity tab, click the select logo button. And this will take you to your media library. This is where you'll upload and store the images that you're going to use on your blog. And to add the image of the new logo, simply click on the Select Files button to search for the logo on your computer. And then once you have the image, there are two things I always recommend doing. If you look at the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the attachment details. The first thing I recommend doing is adding the alt text. And without getting too technical, the alt text is what the search engines will see since they can't actually see your images. So you'll want to be descriptive when you're filling out the alt text. There we go. Next thing you should do is give the image a title. And by default, it will show the image's file name. And this is what will show up whenever someone hovers their mouse over the image. So I recommend changing it for a good user experience, plus it's best practice. And I'm gonna type the site title and tagline. There we go. And go ahead and click the select button. Then you'll have the option to crop it. I'm gonna click the skip cropping button since we're gonna be using the full image. Then back of the blog, you can see that the image I created in Canva is being used as our logo. It looks great, but my only gripe with it is that the theme doesn't really give you too much wiggle room when it comes to the size of the logo, so the image seems somewhat small. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the default site title and tagline provided by the theme. So let's remove the logo by clicking the Remove button. Then check the box to display the site title and tagline. There we go. The next thing we want to do is add a favicon, or as WordPress calls it, a site icon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a favicon or a site icon is, a favicon is a tiny image that web browsers use to help distinguish between web pages. And if we fast forward to the end of the video and take a look at the top of the screen, you can see what I'm talking about. These images in the tabs are favicons. They're great for branding efforts, and they help people navigate online. Additionally, some browsers and mobile devices will display a larger image, like the Safari browser, which is what you're looking at right now. And the site icon that we're going to create will be also used as a browser and app icon for your blog. So that's why it's really important to have a site icon for your branding efforts. All right, back at the blog. Now, before you choose your site icon image, keep in mind that WordPress recommends that you use an image that's at least 512 pixels wide and tall. And that's because the image will be used for your favicon and app icon. And you can easily create your own site icon with 
canva.com. Just use the same steps as we did to create the logo, but make your image 512 by 512 pixels. Again, it's super simple and it's free. All right, so to add the image you're gonna use for your site icon, simply click on the Select Site Icon button, and this will bring us to the Media Library. Then click Upload Files. And then the Select Files button. And once you've uploaded the image, don't forget about the attachment details. So be sure to enter the alt text and the title for this image. And then click the select button. And as you can see, the image I just uploaded is now being used for the favicon and site icon. Looks great and looks a lot more professional. I'll also add, if you're not seeing it right away, give it a few minutes and clear your browser's cache and history, refresh the page, and it'll show up. All right, so let's publish our changes, and all that means is that we're going to make the changes we just made live on our blog, so click the Publish button, and our changes are now live. The final thing I want to show you about the header is how you can remove the font and use an image with font on it instead. This comes in handy if you have a unique design or want to use different style text than what the theme provides. So we'll want to go back a slide within the customization menu by clicking that arrow there. Then open the header image tab. And this will give you the ability to edit the image that's currently being used. Now before you swap out the image, please note that the recommended size for your new image is 1300 by 500 pixels. Anything that is sized differently won't look as good when it's used as the header image. And one way to ensure that your image is the right size is to use a service like, you guessed it, canva.com. And just like our logo on favicon, we can make a custom image size with canva.com and really change the overall look and feel of the blog with a new and unique image. So once you have your new image, head back to your blog and click the Add New Image button. And this will bring you to your media library. Then we're going to upload a new image, so click the Upload File link. And then the Select Files button. And grab that image from your computer. There we go. And don't forget about the attachment details. I know this seems tedious and kind of annoying, but adding the alt text and image title are good for the user experience and it can help boost your SEO. Okay, now that the image is ready, click the select and crop button. And our image is perfectly sized, so we don't need to crop it, so click the skip cropping button. And voila, we now have a new background header image. Looks great. Another thing I want to point out is that you do have some additional features within this settings menu. If you'd like, you can upload multiple header images and randomize what displays by clicking this button. It's just another way to make your blog stand out. Another option is to add the parallax scrolling effect. And let me show you what that means. So by default, your header, text, and image scroll as one with the page. But if you check the box next to Enable Parallax Scrolling, you'll get the parallax effect within your header. And as you can see, it's almost as if the image is stationary and the text moves against the image as you scroll. This is a super cool effect that typically only comes with premium themes. But for this example in the tutorial, I'm just going to use the default version. So I'm going to uncheck this box and set it back to normal. But, but again, this is a cool effect if you want to add it to your blog. All right, then the last thing I want to show you with the header is how to use a custom image with font on it. So the first thing we'll want to do is remove the current font being used for the site title and tagline. So let's go back a slide again by clicking the arrow and then open the site identity tab. And then uncheck the box next to display site title and tagline. 
And that will remove the font in our header. Then let's go back to the header since we're going to change the image. So click the arrow again and open the header tab. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you yet another option you have when it comes to styling your header. By default, the free version of this theme only shows a certain kind of font within the site title and tagline. So this is where you can get creative and make a custom image on Canva.com using different font styles. And let me show you what I mean. So if we head back over to Canva.com, you can see that I've created a new header image that's 1300 by 500 pixels, but I've added some different styled font on top of the image. Again, Canva gives you a ton of flexibility and options when it comes to image and font stylings. It's just one of the many reasons why I love them and use them for multiple projects. And then once you've created your new and improved image and you've downloaded it from Canva.com, head back to your blog and within the header image tab, click the add new image button. And just like before, you're gonna upload that new image you just created. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip past the attachment details, but you'll wanna get in the habit of adding those to each image you upload to your blog. And then let's click the Select and Crop button. And then skip cropping. And beautiful, look at that. This is a great way to make your blog stand out, promote your brand, and create a cool user experience. Either way, adding a unique image with a different font on it can add some unique creative to your blog's layout. However, for this tutorial, I'm actually gonna revert back to the default version. And again, this is just another reason why I love this theme. You really have a ton of flexibility when it comes to the design of your blog and they make it super simple to reconfigure. For example, check this out. The theme stores previously used header images within this section of the customization menu. So you can easily revert back by selecting the previous used header image right here. Super convenient and easy to do. Then I'm gonna go back to the site identity tab and add the site title and tagline font back. There we go and let's publish our changes and make them live. So click the publish button. And then let's exit out of here real quick and take a look. Looks great. You now know how to quickly edit your header and site icon. Moving on next, let's create our blog's pages, categories, and primary navigation menu. The next thing we wanna do is configure our blog by adding additional pages, additional categories, and creating a primary navigation menu. And if we fast forward to the end of this video again, you can see what I'm talking about. Having a primary menu with separate pages and categories allows you to diversify your content and it helps your visitors navigate through your blog as well. This not only creates a better user experience, but it's great for SEO. Another thing I'm gonna show you in this section of the video is how to configure your footers menu. This theme gives you the ability to add multiple menus and your footer is a great place to add things like your privacy policy page so that you're not overloading your primary nav with too many menu items. Okay, so first things first, we'll wanna add our new pages to the blog that we wanna display in our primary navigation menu. And those pages will be an about page and a contact page. Now I should point out that a page is different than a blog post because a page is a static standalone piece of content that is separate from your blog feed. And having an about page and contact page is a great way to introduce yourself to your audience and give them a way to reach out to you. And these pages are essential components to creating a strong relationship with your blog's readers while also growing your audience. Okay, there are a couple ways to add a new page to your blog, but the quickest is at the top of the screen. If you hover your mouse over the plus new link and select page from the drop down, that will let you create a new page. And this will bring you to the WordPress visual editor. And what you're looking at right now is the brand new WordPress editing experience. This was a major change in the WordPress 5.0 update, and it has a drastic effect on how you build and design your pages and blog posts. 
So let's take a closer look at the new editing experience. And I'll go into greater detail as we start to create our pages and posts, but let me give you a quick rundown of the new editor. Now, one of the major differences in this editor is that each section is broken down into a specific type of block. There are image blocks, paragraph blocks, column blocks, and much, much more. The blocks are a new experience that really give you a lot of creative control over what your blog looks like. And before we dive in, you'll notice that the layout of the editor is super different from what you may be used to. But like I said, it's kind of familiar. We still have a field for our title. And there is the content section directly below that. That's where you'll add your various blocks of content. And on the right, you have the document and block settings and page attributes. And then you'll have access to the Yoast SEO plugin if you've installed it. Then there are some additional settings you can reconfigure as well as your publishing options. All right, now that you know your way around the visual editor, let's create our about page. So the first thing we wanna do is give our page a title. And since this is our about page, I'm just gonna type about in the title section. And as you can see, the OSSEO plugin is already beginning to take care of our Google snippet for us by automatically adding the page tile to the snippet. And keep in mind, this is the snippet that will show up when people search for your page in the search engines. When you have some extra time, I really encourage you to edit the snippet and add specific meta descriptions for each page. And I'll show you how to do that whenever we start adding content to our pages. But editing your search engine snippet for each page and blog post is just a good habit to get into. And just to reiterate, we're not going to be adding content to these pages just yet. We're simply creating them so that we can add them to our primary navigation menu. Then once we've created all of our pages and added them to our navigation menu, we'll worry about adding content to those pages. All right, so once you've named the page, go ahead and publish the page by clicking the publish button. And don't worry about anyone seeing this page without any content on it. We haven't launched our blog yet. And then press the publish button one more time to make the page live. There we go. Next, we'll just follow the exact same steps to add the contact page. So just like before, hover your mouse over the plus new link and click on page. And let's add the contact page. And I'm gonna title this contact. And we'll add our contact form to this page a little later on, but let's go ahead and publish it. So click the publish button twice. There we go. Next, let's configure our privacy policy page. This is an aspect of having a blog that can sometimes get overlooked, but with the recent changes to the European privacy laws, it's extremely important that you have a privacy policy page on your blog, regardless of what country your traffic is coming from. I wanna clarify that the following info should not be perceived as legal advice. I am not a lawyer and by no means should this tutorial be used as any type of legal consultation. I recommend that you reach out to a legal professional if you have any questions or concerns when it comes to how to move forward with your blog's privacy policy page. With that being said, the new WordPress update makes it super simple to get started with your privacy policy page. All websites on the internet should have a privacy policy page. It protects your business from legal issues and also helps build customer trust. So to set up your privacy policy page on the left hand side of your WordPress dashboard, click on where it says pages. And this will bring you to your pages management menu. This is where you can collectively check out all the pages on your blog, one of them being your privacy policy page. And you'll notice that WordPress has automatically created a privacy policy page for you. That's pretty nice of them. Now this page isn't published, but you do have the ability to edit it before you do publish it. But like I said, I recommend either reaching out to a legal professional before posting anything to your blog. And as you can see, WordPress has created the content for you. Now, again, this is just default privacy policy page content. I highly recommend reaching out to a legal professional. And you can also click on this help link here that WordPress has to give you some extra guidance when it comes to your privacy policy page. Then after you've tailored the content within the privacy policy page, you should have it somewhere on your blog. And I recommend either having it in your primary navigation menu or in your footer. Either way, in many countries, including the United States, websites are required by law to disclose the information they collect about their visitors and how that information is used. Your privacy policy can protect you legally 
and is also good for SEO. Google looks for a privacy policy page and is a ranking metric they use when crawling your blog. All right, so let's publish this real quick. So click the publish button. Then after you've created your privacy policy page, you'll need to set it in the WordPress privacy settings. And to do that, hover your mouse over settings on the left hand side of the screen and click on privacy. And this will bring you to your blog's privacy settings where you can set which page you want to officially use for your privacy policy page. This is basically telling the search engines and WordPress which page is your privacy policy page. So where it says change your privacy policy page, make sure that drop down menu has privacy policy selected and then click the use this page button. This makes it official and will be the first line of defense in the ongoing and ever changing terrain of the privacy laws online. Okay, now that we have our privacy policy page ready to go, I want to do some quick house cleaning before we move on. So let's go back to the site page management menu by clicking on pages. And as you can see, WordPress starts you off with a published sample page to help you visualize what your content will look like within the theme. But we want to get rid of this because we don't want the search engines to index it and we don't want people to navigate to it somehow. It's not a huge deal, but it's just the best practice to get rid of it. So to delete it, simply hover your mouse over the sample page and click on the red trash link. This will move the page to the trash. Simple as that. All right, moving on. Next, let's create your blog's categories. So now that we have the three pages that we're going to use in our primary navigation menu and our footer menu, the remaining menu items are going to be categories. And if you're new to categories, a category is a group of related blog posts that are about similar subjects. And when we create a blog post, WordPress lets you add it to a particular category. For example, in this tutorial, I'm going to create a category called style. Then when I write blog posts about style, I'll add them to the style category. Then what's even cooler is that I'm going to add that category to my primary navigation menu. So that whenever someone clicks on style, it will take them to a page that lists all the blog posts that have been added to the style category. Bottom line, whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. It's not only a cool feature, but it's a great user experience as well. Okay, so back at our blog, there are a couple of different ways you can go about adding categories. You can do it in the back end of each blog post, or you can do it within the WordPress dashboard. We're going to cover both ways in this tutorial, but right now I'll show you how to add the categories in the WordPress dashboard. So on the left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over posts and click on categories. And this will bring you to your categories management menu. And you'll see that WordPress starts you off with an uncategorized category by default, but you can easily create new categories here as well. So since this is a lifestyle blog, I'm going to be creating categories that you'd usually associate with a lifestyle blogger. And these are just examples, so don't feel that you are confined to these categories that I make within the next few minutes. Whenever you're making your categories, think about your content and your target audience. Your categories should be like a topic bucket that can house various types of blog posts. For example, the first category I'm going to create is style. And to create the category, simply type style in the name field. And be sure to type this out the way you want it to look on your site. Then directly below that is the slug. And the slug is the URL friendly version of the category name and it's usually lowercase and contains only letters, numbers, and hyphens. So the slug is going to be style but with a lowercase s. Then directly below that you'll see a drop down for the parent category. And the reason for this is because categories are able to have a hierarchy. And WordPress's example of this is that you may have a jazz category and under that have children categories like bebop and big band. However, for this tutorial, we're not going to have a category hierarchy, so just go ahead and skip that as well and click the Add New Category button. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that our new category style has been added to our blog. All right, let's add our second category. So in the name field, I'm going to type DIY, and then the slug is going to be DIY but with lowercase letters. And again, we're going to skip the parent category option in the description and click the add new category button. There we go. 
And then I'm going to add a couple more categories, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to fast forward through it. But hopefully you get the idea. It's pretty straightforward. And then now that we have all of our categories, the next thing we want to do is add them to our primary navigation menu along with our about and contact page. So we'll need to go back to our customization menu and the way to get there is to hover your mouse over your blog's title in the upper left hand side of the screen and click on visit site. Then back at the blog, the first thing we want to do is access the menu management page. And you'll notice that the themes developers made it super convenient to access by clicking on the setup menu link. And then this will open up your blog's menu settings. This is where we will be creating our primary navigation menu that will appear throughout the blog. So the first thing we want to do is give our menu a name. So I'm just going to name this primary menu. But in that menu name field, that's where you'll want to enter the name of your menu. Then to start building it, click the Create Menu button. Next, let's build out our menu starting with the pages. So on the left hand side of the screen, open the Pages tab if you haven't done so already. And then simply select the pages you want to add to the menu. So go ahead and select your Contact and About page. And then click the Add to Menu button. And you'll see your primary menu being built in real time. Pretty cool. Next, let's do the same thing for the Categories. So click on the Categories tab and then click view all if you're not seeing all the categories you created listed and then select the categories that you want to add to the primary navigation menu and click the add to menu button beautiful next I want to add a custom home menu item this gives your blog's readers an easy way to get back to the home page. It also creates a friendly user experience and it helps people navigate your blog. So go ahead and click on custom links and where it says link text, type in home. This will be what appears in our primary navigation menu. Then type in the URL of where you want this part of the menu to take you. And we want it to take visitors to our home page, so we'll just type in our primary domain and then click the add to menu button And you should see that the home custom link has been added to the menu structure. Perfect. Next, you want to situate the menu items so that they appear the way you want on your live blog. For example, the menu items listed at the top of the menu structure will be the farthest to the left on your blog's navigation menu. So I want the home to be the first option on my primary nav. So you can simply drag and drop the menu items so that they coordinate with how you want them to appear on your blog. It's pretty cool. Another cool feature is that you can create sub-menu items by easily pulling the tab a little bit to the right so that it's indented and that will create a sub-menu item in your primary nav as well. And then finally, if you look directly below the menu structure, you'll see the menu settings. Be sure to check the box in the display location that says Main Menu. This ensures that your menu's display location is the primary menu of your blog. Then click the Save Menu button And you should get a notification letting you know that the primary menu has been successfully updated. And when you visit your blog, you can see that the primary menu is up and running and the pages and categories within the menu are now in the order we want. Looks great. Next, let's create our footer menu. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what we're going to be making. So this theme gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to your menu placement. In addition to your primary nav, you can also create other menus within your blog, like the footer menu. 
And this is a great place to put menu items that are geared more towards legal and compliance. So let's add your privacy policy page to your footer menu. Okay, so back at the blog, we're going to revisit our menu management page. And another way to get there is to hover your mouse over your site title on the upper left hand side of the screen and click on menu. And again, this will take you to your menu management page. Then we're going to be creating a new and separate footer menu. And then click the create a new menu link. And these are the same steps as before. So let's name this menu footer for obvious reasons. And then click the create menu button. And all we're doing is we're adding the privacy policy page to this menu. So within the pages section, select the privacy policy page. You may need to click view all to find it. There it is. So go ahead and select it and click the add to menu button. And we're only going to be adding one page to this footer menu, but if you want to add more, go ahead and do that now. Next, you'll want to set the display location in the menu settings by selecting footer menu. This ensures that this menu will show up at the bottom of your blog. And then let's make this live. So click the save menu button and your footer menu will be updated and good to go. All right, so let's check it out and visit our site. And then when we scroll down to the bottom of the blog, you'll see that the footer menu is activated and your privacy policy menu item is working just fine. Looks great. All right, moving on. Next, let's start designing your blog and setting the color scheme and creating your sidebar. So this theme gives you the ability to easily change the color that is used throughout your blog. And what I mean by this is that by default, the theme's color scheme is set to this light blue. The color is used as somewhat of an accent throughout your site. It's a small yet important detail that can help make sure that your site is aligned with your brand. Color schemes are important, so let me show you how to change it. Okay, so these changes will be made in your customization menu. So once again, click the customize link at the top of the screen. And then open the colors tab and you'll be presented with some editing options for your blog's colors. You can change the accent, which is what is used in the menu, categories, hyperlinks, and the sidebar. You can also change the colors of your headers and background color. However, for this example, I'm gonna change the blue accent color. So simply click on the select color button, and this will open a color selector tool. And you can drag the tool across the different colors and easily change the color scheme that way. Or if you have a specific color in mind, you can use the color hex color code. Here's how it works. If you go to colorhex.com, you can literally choose from thousands of colors and their hex color codes. And all a hex color code is, is it's a way of specifying color using hexadecimal values. This code, which starts with the pound sign followed by a few numbers, is generally associated with HTML and is how color is translated in computer code language. All right. Once you've decided on the specific color you're looking for, just copy that hex code and paste it within the color field in the customization menu like so. And then you can see that the hex color code is being translated and our new color scheme is being used across the blog. Nice work. Okay, so let's publish our changes and make them live by clicking the publish button. And then I'm gonna exit out of here real quick and take a look. And it looks great. Our new color is being used across the blog. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see that it's even being used in our footer. Again, it's not a huge deal, but your blog's color scheme can help with brand recognition and brand awareness. So I highly recommend taking advantage of this tool and setting the colors to something that is in line with your personal brand. Okay, moving on. Next, let's build your blog sidebar. All right, now it's time to build our sidebar. So your blog sidebar is a global element, meaning that it stays the same on every page that has a sidebar. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see that each page has a two column layout that can easily be customized to your liking. On the left side is where we add the content and on the right side is our sidebar. This is where we can add various widgets, links, images, and even earn money with affiliate campaigns and AdSense ads. 
Keep in mind that the content on each page will be different, but the sidebar remains the same throughout the blog. Now, by default, WordPress starts your sidebar off with some pretty basic widgets. These aren't bad, and you may want to keep some of them for your blog, but for this video, we're going to basically start from scratch. And the first part of the sidebar we're going to build is an About Me section. And we're going to have an image followed by a little intro blurb that links to your About page. This is a great way to introduce yourself to your audience and drive traffic to a specific page. So, back at your blog, before we customize the sidebar, we need to upload the image that sits above the blurb within the About Me section. So let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. And then you can actually upload the image here by hovering your mouse over Media and click on Add New. And then you can drag the image to upload it or select the file from your hard drive. I'm going to upload from my computer, so click the Select File button and then find the image you want to use. And our image for the About Me blurb is ready to go. Next, let's start customizing the sidebar. So head back to your blog by clicking on Visit Site. And then open the customization menu. Then open the Widgets tab, and for this video we're going to configure our right sidebar, meaning the sidebar to the right hand side of our content. So open the right sidebar tab, and before we start deleting widgets, you have a lot of flexibility with this sidebar. Each widget represents a different section of the sidebar, and you can easily rearrange them by dragging and dropping the widgets in any order you'd like. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's clean this up. So let's get rid of a few of the widgets that we won't be using in our sidebar. And to remove them, simply click on the arrow. And then once the widget opens up, click the red Remove link, and the widget will magically disappear. And we'll go ahead and remove all of the widgets in the sidebar. And you'll notice that as you remove them from the customization menu, they're removed from your blog as well. Pretty cool. All right, the first part of our sidebar is going to be our About Me section. Now, the way I teach you how to create this part of your sidebar is from scratch and with the help of a little HTML. If you've never used HTML before, no worries. It's super simple, and I'm going to walk you through the process step by step. So, the first thing you'll want to do is click the Add a Widget button, and then you'll see all the widgets that you can add to your sidebar. And we're going to be adding some HTML to the sidebar, so go ahead and select the custom HTML widget. There we go. And this will open up the widget, and as you can see, it's a pretty simple layout. You have a field for your title, which is what will display above your About Me section. And then below that is a text box where you'll enter the HTML code. So go ahead and give it a title. I'm just calling this About Me. And you'll notice that as you're typing, the widget title has appeared within the sidebar. Looking good. Next, it's time to add our custom HTML. So, head over to my code cheat sheet, and then scroll down a little until you find the About Me widget section. And I know it might look like a lot, but trust me, it's not really once you get used to it. All you need to do is highlight this code on the Google Doc, copy it, and then paste it in the custom HTML widget. Now, you may notice that some of the code on the cheat sheet is red, I did that so that you would know what to change after you paste the code to the custom HTML widget. And I'll show you what I mean in a few minutes. So let's copy this code. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command C on my keyboard. Then back at the blog at the custom HTML widget, you're going to paste the code within the content section. And you'll probably notice that this code is using a different image and some dummy text. So you'll just need to edit that code so that it displays your image shows the text that you want and links to your About page. And I'll show you how to do that in a few seconds. So, within the HTML, you're going to make a few edits. The first is the image URL. And all you're going to do is swap this URL out with the URL of the image that we uploaded a few moments ago to our WordPress dashboard. 
But first, we need to get the new image's URL. So let's publish this really quick so that our code stays in the sidebar. So click the Publish button. Then let's go back to our media library. So head back to your WordPress dashboard. Then on the left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over media and click on library. And then find the image that you want to use for your about me widget and click on it. And this will open the attachment details. Then all we want is the link right here. So highlight and copy that. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command C on my keyboard to copy it. Then we'll exit out of our media library and go back to our site. So click Visit Site. And open the customization menu. Then open the Widgets tab. Then the right sidebar tab. And open the custom HTML widget by clicking that little arrow. Then within the code, find the image URL. It will be within that first paragraph there. And be sure to only highlight the URL in between the quotations. You'll want to leave the quotations. That's very important. Then after you've highlighted the original URL, go ahead and paste the URL that we just copied from our new image. And look at that. The new URL within our code is now displaying our new image. Nice work. All right, next you can change the title text. I have it as writer and blogger, but you can change it to whatever you want by simply changing the text within the code. Next is the blurb intro text. And again, you're just going to remove the dummy text within the code and write whatever you want. This is a great opportunity to give a quick intro and tell your readers what you're all about. Then finally is the learn more link. And I've crafted the code so that you can link to your about page. And all you have to do is swap out this link within the HTML with the URL of your own About page. All right, your About Me section of your sidebar is complete. So let's go ahead and publish these changes and make them live. Next, we wanna add our social icons to the sidebar. Now, if we fast forward to the end of this video, you can see what the icons will look like once we set them up. As you can see, we're going to place the icons right below the About Me section of the sidebar. This particular widget displays the social icons in a clean and minimalist design, and it's super simple to set up. Okay, so back at the blog, we're going to add another widget, so click the Add a Widget button. And then find the Simple Social Icons tab. And then this is where you can configure the widget so that it displays the links to your specific social networks. So first things first, let's give this section a title and I'm gonna call it Follow Me. We want people to click on these icons and follow us. Then you also have the option to have the icons open in a new window when they're clicked. This is a personal preference, but I recommend doing it. So go ahead and check the box next to where it says Open Links in a New Window. And below that, you have the ability to customize the size, radius, width, alignment, and color of the social icons. First is the icon size. And I'm going to set this to 40 pixels. Then I'm going to leave the border radius alone, but set the alignment on the icons so that they're centered. So click that drop down menu under alignment and select align center. And then I'm going to skip the colors for now, but I'll come back to that in a second. And then let's add the social networks that we want to display in the sidebar. 
And as you can see, they have all the popular social media networks listed. And you'll want to put the full URL of the site that you want to link to within each field. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to use a hashtag so that the icon shows up. And as you're entering the URLs of your social networks, you'll notice that the default icons are displaying in the sidebar. And don't worry if you don't like the size and color of them, we're gonna change that right now. So if you scroll back up to the color section, we'll basically just click the select color button next to the aspect of the widget that you wanna change. And it's the exact same process as whenever we configured the blog's colors a little while ago. And it will open up the color selector tool and you can choose the colors that way or if you know the hex color code of the color you want you can simply copy and paste it within the widget and it will change the color that way as well and I'm gonna change the icon color the hover color and background colors there we go check that out pretty cool and as you can see as I hover my mouse over each icon our settings that we configured in the widget are displaying in our social icons in the sidebar. So let's go ahead and publish our changes. And moving on. Next, let's add an opt-in form to our blog so you can start building and growing your email list. The next thing we're going to do with our sidebar is add and configure an email opt-in form. Now, if you're new to the concept, here are the basics. We're going to create an opt-in form and add it to the sidebar. And once your blog's visitors fill out that opt-in form, their information will be stored and you'll be able to begin your email marketing relationship with them via professional email marketing software. But the first thing you need to do is sign up with an email marketing company. I personally use Aweber on blogwithben.com and highly recommend them for any blogger who is serious about growing their email list and establishing a strong relationship with their audience. I've been using Aweber for quite a while now and their email marketing team has helped me grow my audience and open up a line of communication with the people that I'm trying to serve. And Aweber has given me the tools to establish trust with my audience while also helping me generate a passive income online. And because of that revenue stream, Aweber basically pays for itself. And it all started because I created an email list with Aweber. Now, the great thing about Aweber is that they offer a 30-day free trial that lets you test drive the platform for an entire month to see if it's right for you. Now, like I said, I've been using them for a while and I love it, but this free trial gives you the opportunity to really see if it's going to be beneficial to you and your audience. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do a deep dive on setting up your Aweber account in this video. However, I highly recommend that you check out my Aweber tutorial. And I'll put a link in the show notes below this video, but this Aweber tutorial will get into the nitty gritty of setting up your account, creating your first email list, building an opt-in form, creating your email journey, and monetizing your email list. Just head over to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel and check it out. Another thing I want to point out before we get started is that in this portion of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an opt-in form, sometimes called a sign-up form, using Aweber. However, I also have tutorials on how to do this with Constant Contact. As you can see, they offer sign-up forms, as well as MailChimp. They allow you to create sign-up forms as well. And again, I'll put a link to the Constant Contact and MailChimp tutorials below this video in the show notes. And if you want to give either one of those platforms a try, I highly recommend both of them. Constant Contact actually has a 60-day free trial where you don't even need a credit card to sign up. So I highly recommend them if you're on a budget. All right, so for this tutorial, we're going to use Aweber. So what you're looking at right now is the Aweber dashboard. And Aweber makes it super simple to set up your blog's sign-up form. And the great part about it is that it's all inclusive. Everything is handled through the Aweber platform, which makes the process even easier. So to build your form, click on Sign Up Forms in the navigation menu. And this will bring you to the Sign Up Forms management page. Now, since we're going to be creating our own form and adding it to our blog, click the green Create a Sign Up Form button. And from that drop down, select Sign Up Form.
Next, it's time to design the form. If you look in the upper right hand side of the screen, you can see that Aweber has broken the sign up form creation process into three stages, design, settings, and publish. Super simple and efficient. So our first step is to design. And as you can see, you're presented with a template gallery. These are all pre-made forms that you can choose, edit, and add to your blog. And when you find one you like, click on it, choose your color scheme, this particular form only has one color scheme, but we can change the colors within the editor in a few minutes. And then click the Load Template button. And now you can begin to design the form. So as you can see, each section of the form is broken down into rows that you can edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the Powered by Aweber text. So hover your mouse over that section of the form and click on Delete. And this will remove it entirely from the layout of the form. I'm also going to remove the footer and header so that there isn't a bunch of added white space on the form, but you can keep those if you'd like. And you can even add text in those sections as well. You can also edit the form's fields by clicking on them, and this will bring up some additional editing features like changing the text color. And you can also change the text and the color of the form button. Simply click on the submit button, and this will open up the settings and another text field will pop up. You can even change the call to action text. So instead of submit, I'm gonna use the word subscribe. There we go. Then I'm actually gonna clean up the form even more and remove the email privacy link. And then click the save your form button. And go to step number two. So this is the setting step and it's where you'll edit the form's properties and set the thank you page. So the first thing is the form name. Your subscribers won't see this name, it just helps you distinguish which form is which in the back end of Aweber. Next you'll choose where your subscribers will go after they fill out your form. This is called your thank you page. And Aweber offers several default thank you pages and even a smart version that shows a video on how to confirm. You can even create your own thank you page and set it here if you'd like but I'm just keeping the basic version for this tutorial. And finally, there are a few additional options to set the already subscribed page. And this is for people who try to sign up to your list who have already subscribed. I'm not changing this page for this tutorial, so I'll leave it as is. And there are also some additional advanced settings, but I'm not changing those either. And then once everything has been filled out and configured, click the go to step three button. And, and you'll be prompted to save your form before moving on, so click the save your form button. The next will be asked, who will publish this form to your site? Click the I will install my form, and then select the JavaScript tab, it should already be selected, and then highlight the code and copy it. And I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command C on my keyboard. Next, it's time to add the code to your blog. So back at the customization menu, we're going to add another HTML widget. So click the add a widget button and then select the custom HTML widget. And then for the title, I'm just going to title this newsletter, since this opt-in form will be sending submissions to our newsletter in Aweber. And then within the content section, simply paste the code that we copied from Aweber. Look at that, our code from Aweber is working and we now have a beautiful and professional looking opt-in form embedded within the sidebar. All right, so let's go ahead and publish this. So click the publish button. And again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to build your email list. The first step in doing that is to have a way to collect email addresses. And this sign up form gives you the ability to build and grow your subscribers. Okay, so we're actually gonna move on to the Instagram portion of the tutorial, but there are still some monetization strategies that we'll add to the sidebar a little later on. Reason being is that it's important to have your blog ready to go before you monetize it. But don't worry, we'll cover that a little later on in the video. So for now, let's configure our Instagram plugin and add our Instagram feed to the bottom of our blog. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna configure the Smash Balloon Instagram feed plugin so that you can display your feed across the bottom of your blog. 
As a lifestyle blogger, your Instagram account is your lifeline to your audience and sponsors. So having an additional way to promote your Instagram feed on your blog is a great growth strategy. Plus, this type of feature is usually something you have to pay for. But the Bard theme and plugin allow you to promote your Insta feed for free. And I gotta say, it looks really professional and is super easy to implement. So to add your Instagram feed to your footer, you'll need to reconfigure the Smash Balloon plugin. So let's exit the customization menu and go back to our WordPress dashboard. And then on the left hand side of the screen, click on Instagram feed. And this will bring you to the plugins settings menu. And the first thing you'll want to do is connect your Instagram account. So click on the connect an Instagram account button. Then you'll be asked if this is a personal or business account. Choose what type of account you're using and click connect. Then you'll be prompted to connect your account. Now I've previously connected this account so your screen might look a little different than mine. But after you approve Instagram to link your account to the plugin, click the continue button. And then to officially connect your Instagram account, click the connect this account button and you'll get a success notification letting you know that your account has been connected. Next, it's time to customize the features. So click the customize tab and this will give you the ability to reconfigure how the plugin displays your Instagram feed on your blog. The first is the general section. I recommend having the width at 100% and the height of feed blank and leave the background color as is. Next is the layout. We're using the free version so we can only have the grid layout type. Then for number of posts, I set it to six, but you can have more or less if you want. The number of columns should be one. Padding around images at zero pixels and don't check the disable mobile layout box. Then moving on to the header section, uncheck the box next to where it says show feed header. Then scroll down to the load more button and follow button sections and uncheck the boxes next to show the load more button and follow button. Be sure to uncheck both of those boxes. Then scroll down to the very bottom and click the Save Changes button. And you should see a notification that our changes were saved. Now it's time to display our feed on our blog. And the way to do that is with some short code. So click on the Display Your Feed tab. And you have a ton of customization options as to how you can display your feed with the code. To display your normal Instagram feed, simply copy and paste this short code within your footer. So highlight and copy the Instagram feed short code and head back to your customization menu. So click visit site and then open the customization menu. and then open the widgets tab. And this time we're going to use the Instagram widget. So open that tab and then add a new widget and select the custom HTML widget. And then all you're going to do is give this a title. So I'm just gonna put Instagram. Then in the content section, simply paste the short code. And then when we scroll down to the bottom of the blog, beautiful. Your Instagram feed will span across the entire footer, and it's just another way to promote your brand and grow your following. And like I said, this is typically a feature that only comes with premium themes, or you have to pay for it through a premium plugin. So this is a really awesome feature. Okay, so let's publish our changes and move on. 
Next, let's add our social icons to our header and footer. So another cool feature of this theme is that they give you the ability to add social icons to your header and footer. And if we fast forward to the end of the video, you can see what that will look like. So within the header, under the site title and tagline, you can add a handful of social icons. Again, this is just another great way to promote your social channels while also building your following. And then whenever we scroll down towards the bottom of the page, you also have the ability to add them to your footer. This is a great feature that can add some professionalism and credibility to your blog. Okay, so let's add our social icons to the header and footer. So back at the blog, head over to your customization menu. And then open the social media tab. And you'll notice that there are four sections to add four different social icons. And it's pretty straightforward. In each section, select your social network you want to display, add the URL, and then add the title. And you'll see that you have multiple options when it comes to what icon to display, but I'm going to start with Facebook. Then in the URL, you'll want to add your URL of that particular social network. For the sake of time, I'm just using hashtag. And then the title can be anything, but I recommend adding the name of the social network you're using. That's going to show up in the footer. And then you can see that the icons start to show up within the header. Then I'm also going to add Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And we'll go through that real quick. Awesome. Looks good in the header. And then if you scroll down, you don't see them in the footer. You'll just need to make one quick adjustment. So go back a slide in your customization menu. And then open the page footer tab. And then check the box next to where it says show social icons. And this will allow the social icons we just configured to display within your footer. Looks great. All right, let's publish these changes. So click the publish button. And moving on. Next, let's craft your about page and start adding content to your blog. So the first page we're going to configure is the about page. And if we fast forward real quick, you can get a better idea of what we're going to be designing. So your about page is not only a great place to introduce yourself, but it also serves as a way to communicate your mission and vision to your blog's readers. And this theme presents your content with a cool, minimalist look and feel. And I just love the way it looks and it's super simple to do. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, since we're editing our about page, let's access it first. So click about in your primary nav and that will take you to the page. Then click edit page at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to the back end of the page and give you access to the WordPress editor. Now I know we covered this a little earlier in the video, but just a quick refresher. You have your title section, your content area, the document and block settings, along with the Yoast SEO settings and some additional settings, and your publishing options. All right, so now it's time to start writing. So right below the title, go ahead and start typing out your introduction. Now for this tutorial, I'm just pasting some dummy text here, but this is where you'll want to start writing about yourself and introducing yourself to your audience. Now as you start writing, the new WordPress editor is automatically creating what is called a paragraph block, and these are blocks of content designated for your text. And if you hover your mouse over your text and click on it, this will bring up the editing toolbar that gives you even more editing options within the block. You can change the alignment, you can add bold font, italicize it, create a hyperlink, and much, much more. We'll cover some of the other editing options, but the new blocks feature is a powerful editing tool that you can use as you create your content. 
Then before we move on, I wanna give you a quick demo on how to add blocks of content to your page. So anytime you wanna add a different type of block, you can do so by clicking on the circle plus icon. And this will open up a pop-up menu where you can browse the various types of blocks that WordPress has to offer. And this new block feature really gives you a ton of flexibility when it comes to the layout and design of your pages and blog posts. And we'll get a lot more familiar with the different types of blocks in a few moments, but I just wanted to show you how to access the block menu and add different blocks before we moved on. Okay, so for our intro paragraphs, I'm just going to copy and paste a few more paragraphs of dummy text. And as I do, you'll see the outline of each paragraph block, as well as the editing toolbar within the page. It's pretty cool. Next, I want to add a heading. And this will be a different sized and formatted font that stands apart from the rest of the text. And having different headings within your content is good for SEO, content structure, and readability. Headings help people skim through your content and quickly find what they want. So to achieve this, we'll need to add a heading block after the paragraph block. And to add a completely new block, just click the circle plus icon. And this will bring up the block menu that I just introduced you to. And we'll want a heading block. So in the search field, type in heading. And you can easily find the heading block without having to go through the entire block menu. This can save you some time. Then, once again, if you click on the heading block, you'll be presented with some more editing options that you can see towards the top of the block. This allows you to change the type of heading, bold the font, italicize it, add a link, and much more. And I encourage you to experiment with the editing options whenever you have some more time. Okay, so this heading is going to be about the mission of the blog. So I'll title this My Mission. And next I'm gonna add some more text. So again, I'm just pasting some dummy text below our heading, but this is where you would start writing again. Then I'll add another heading. So click the circle plus icon and within the block menu, search for the heading block. And then this section of our page will be about the vision of our blog. So I'll type my vision. And then below this heading, I'm gonna add an image. So once again, click the circle plus icon and search for the image block. And there it is. Then within the image block, you can add the image by uploading it or adding it from your media gallery. I'm going to upload it from my computer, so I'll click the upload button. And we'll just find the image that we want to use. There we go. And then the image block gives you some flexibility when it comes to how your images are displayed. As you can see, there are some additional editing options within the block and in the block settings on the right hand side of the screen. Pretty cool. Now, before I do anything, I want to add some more text below the image. So I'm just going to paste some more dummy text there. And you'll probably notice that the image takes up the entire content section of the page. Well, that's because the original size was pretty large. However, I want it to set to the left of our content. So check this out. To align it to the left in the image block toolbar, click the change alignment icon. Select align left, and this will push the image to the left of the content section and will allow us to wrap the text around the image. However, we still need to adjust the size of the image so that the content actually wraps around it. And you can easily adjust the size by dragging the blue dot on either side of the image like so. Super easy and an awesome new feature within the editor. Okay, let's add another heading. Let me show you another cool way to add a block. So instead of clicking the circle plus icon, you can also add blocks by clicking the three dot icon within the paragraph block. This gives us even more editing options and I'm gonna insert a heading block after this paragraph block. So from the more options drop down, click on insert after and this will give you the ability to add an additional block below the paragraph block. And then you may see the heading icon here to the right. WordPress will automatically add blocks you frequently use here so that you don't have to go through the process of opening the block menu every time. So if you see the heading block icon here, click on it. If not, you'll have to click the circle plus icon and access the heading icon that way. But once you start using the heading block, you'll start to see the heading icon option on the right. And then this section is gonna be more of a call to action because I'm gonna add another Aweber signup form within the page. So I'll title this Become a Lifestyle Diva. And then I'll add some content. 
And then check this out. Just like our sign up form we added to our sidebar, I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing and embed it within the about page. So click the three dot icon to access the more editing options. Select insert after. Then click the circle plus icon. And search for the HTML block. This is pretty straightforward. You'll just paste your sign up form code from Aweber within the HTML block. So back at Aweber, I've created a separate form for this page that looks very similar to our sidebar opt in form. But the only difference with this one is that I changed the width of the form to 1000 pixels. This ensures that it will span across the screen. And I'll just quickly follow the same steps as before when creating the form and then copy the code. And back at the blog, simply paste the code within the HTML block and it's ready to go. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but we'll preview it here in a second to make sure all is well. Okay, it's starting to come together. So the next thing we want to do is add a featured image. And a featured image can be described as the image that visually represents either your blog post or page on social media. It's also the image that's above the content on our page. So let's add our featured image to our about page real quick. So within the editor on the right hand side of the screen, under the document settings, click on the featured image tab and then click on the set featured image button. And this will take us to the media gallery where you can upload an image. So click the upload link and then select files. And find your image and once you have it, don't forget about the attachment details. So fill in your alt text and title fields. I know it may seem tedious, but this is really good for SEO and user experience. Then once that's done, click the set featured image button. And then you'll see that our featured image has been added. Next, let's preview our work that we've done so far. And this is a really cool WordPress feature that allows you to preview what your content will look like before you publish it. It's a great resource to have because sometimes what we build in the back end of the WordPress editor doesn't always translate to the front end of our blog. So that's why it's important to preview your edits before publishing them and making them live on your blog. So to preview the about page, simply click the preview button at the top of the screen. And this will open a separate browser tab with the preview environment. And look at that, we have our beautiful featured image with the two column layout, our headings, images, form and sidebar. Everything looks amazing. Okay, so back at the editor, the last thing we want to configure before we publish are the Yoast SEO settings. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the editor, you'll see the Yoast SEO settings if you've installed and activated the plugin. Now, I'm not going to go into a deep dive here, but I'll show you the basics for how to optimize your pages and blog posts for the search engines by using this plugin. So the Yoast SEO plugin is a powerful tool and should be used every time you create a page or blog post on your blog. Reason being, you can change how your search engine snippet looks from your WordPress editor, and this is a super cool feature. So to edit the snippet, simply click on the edit snippet button and this will present you with some additional editing options. First is the SEO title. And by default, Yoast starts you off with what is called snippet variables of the title of the page, dash separator, followed by the site title. But if you wanna change how the search engines present your page within the search results, you can do that in the SEO title field. And keep in mind that this only edits the title in your search engine snippets, not what shows up on your actual blog. This is strictly to optimize your pages and posts for the search engines. Next is the slug. And the slug is your permalink. So whatever comes after the .com of your page will show up here. Next is the meta description, which is the preview text that people see when they search for your blog posts on a search engine. And it's also used in the HTML of your post, but we won't get into that for now. So within the meta description box, simply start typing a preview of your post. You wanna be sure to use keywords and make it enticing to help improve your click-through rate. Now, you'll probably notice the orange line moving below your text as you type. 
This is the same feature as the SEO title field, and it helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines, and lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet by turning green. And there we go. And there's also a new feature of the plugin that lets you preview the mobile and desktop version of your search engine snippet by toggling between the two preview options here. It's also good to see how your audience is viewing your blog and how you come across in the search engine results. I can go a long way to your success. So this is a super cool new feature. And now that you've optimized your page for the search engines, click the close snippet editor button. And now we have everything in place and we preview the page, everything looks great. So let's update it so that our changes are live. So click the update button to make these changes live. And this is basically publishing our changes. And then you'll get a notification that the page has been updated. So let's check it out real quick and click the view page link at the top of the screen. And it looks amazing. You now have a sleek about page that will introduce you to your blog's visitors in a creative and unique way. The Bard theme does a great job of displaying the content in a way that draws the reader in and keeps them engaged. And you also have an additional opt-in form to help you build and grow your email list. Nice work. All right, moving on. Next, let's add a contact form to your blog. All right, we're moving along nicely. So next, we're going to add the contact form to your contact page. And if we fast forward real quick and visit the contact page, you'll get a better idea of what we're going to be making. Now, as you can see, we're using the two column layout, but we'll be embedding a contact form from the WP Forms plugin. Having a contact form is a great way to keep a line of communication open between you and your audience, and it's also a great way to build your email list. So to add a contact form, let's go back to our dashboard. Like I said, we're gonna be using the WP Forms plugin and this plugin came pre-installed whenever we initially set up our blog. But if you don't have the WP Forms plugin, be sure to install and activate it for this part of the video. Okay, the first step is to create the form. So on the left-hand side of the screen, click on where it says WP Forms. And this will bring you to the setup screen for the WP Forms plugin. Now, yes, this plugin does come pre-installed with WordPress and it's free. However, there are premium features that can be added if you pay for the premium version. But for this video, we're only using the free features and we'll be creating a basic contact form to embed within our contact page. So to get started, click the Add New button. So first things first, you can name your form here. And if you plan on having multiple forms, then I recommend doing that. But for the sake of time, I'm just using the default title they give us. I'm just gonna leave it blank. Then to create the form, click the Create a Simple Contact Form button. And that will bring you to the form builder. And it gives you a nice preview of what the form will look like. And this is one of the main reasons why I chose to use this plugin. I really like the design of the form and how it looked on the page. Now the free version of the plugin, which we're using, still has some very powerful form features and building options. You can add fields and edit the fields here. However, I'm keeping everything as is. This default form gives us everything we need for our contact page. But again, if you have other features that you wanna to add to your form, you can do so here. And then once you've configured your form, it's super easy to add to your blog. But I wanna show you one thing before we do. If you click on the settings tab on the left hand side of the screen, you'll be presented with some general settings that you can change like the form name, CSS class, button text, and so on. However, the reason I wanted to show you this is the notifications. And if you click on the notification tab, you'll see that the default notification email address is set to your admin email address that you used for whenever you signed up for the WordPress account. Now this isn't a problem if you used your blog's email address or a professional email address, but if you used your personal email to set up this blog, then you'll wanna change that here because this is the email address that will receive notifications when someone tries to contact you through this form, and it's the email that's used on the form email. So it's what people will see whenever they reply to your inquiries. So if you don't wanna use your admin email for that or your personal email, if you signed up to WordPress with your personal email, all you have to do is swap out the admin email tag here 
with the email that you want to use. And if you do change your email, don't forget to save your changes by clicking the Save button again. The next thing I'm going to show you is the confirmation message. So if you click on the confirmation tab, you have the ability to edit the autoresponder email that's sent whenever someone reaches out via the form. And by default, they start you off with a pretty generic message, but you can easily change that here and tailor it to your blog. Okay, so now that our form is ready to go, it's time to embed it in our contact page. So first, let's save it. So click the Save button in the upper right-hand side of the screen. Then we'll need to get the embed code in order to add it to the contact page. So click the Embed button right next to the Save button. And then you should see a pop-up that gives you the code, but it also gives you a helpful video on how to add the code to your blog. It's very thoughtful of them, but I'm about to show you how to do it, so you don't have to watch that video. But you do have to copy the code, so highlight it and then copy it. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm clicking Command-C on my keyboard, and then close the window. And then we're going to add the code to our contact page. So let's exit the WP Forms plugin by clicking the X in the upper right hand side of the screen. Then we'll want to go to the contact page. So the quickest way to get there is to actually go to the page. So let's visit our site. And then click on contact in the primary nav. And that'll bring you to the page. Then to edit the page, click the edit page link at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to the WordPress editor. Then that short code we copied a few minutes ago from WP Forms, simply paste it right where you would add a block. And check this out, WordPress will automatically create a short code block and allow you to embed the form in the page. That is a really cool new feature. All right, so let's check this out real quick. So click the preview button. And as you can see, the short code is displaying our contact form beautifully on the page. Now let's add some content. So back at the editor, I actually want to add some text before the form. And to do that, we'll need to add a paragraph block before the short code. So click the three dot icon within the short code block. And that's going to open up the more options menu. Then select insert before, since we want to add a new block above the form. And I'm just going to add some dummy text, but this could be where you could write a brief explanation of your contact page. Next, I want to add the featured image. So make sure you have the document settings open by clicking on the document tab. And then you can add a featured image. So click the set featured image button. And just like before, simply upload the image that you want to use. And then don't forget about your attachment details. And click on the Set Featured Image button. And it's looking good. Also, don't forget to update your Yoast SEO settings. I'm not going to do that right now, but you should get in the habit of doing that for every single page and blog post. And then let's go ahead and preview this page one more time before we publish it. So click the preview button. And it looks great. I really like the way the WP Forms plugin displays the contact form. Clean, minimalist design. Love it. All right, so let's publish this and make it live. So back at the editor, click the update button. And then let's check it out one more time. So click the view page link. And beautiful, looks great. Having a contact page is yet another way to communicate with your audience, grow your email list, and keep that open line of communication with your readers. All right, moving on. Next, let's publish your very first blog post. So now that we've configured and customized your blog, we can start adding actual blog post content. This is the exciting part. This is when you become an actual blogger. 
All of your hard work up to this point was for this moment, and the Bard theme gives you the ability to present your content in a modern and stylish design. Now, if we fast forward really quick, you can see that we're going to create a blog post that uses various types of media within the post. And the new WordPress editor makes it super simple to add GIFs, Instagram posts, images, and YouTube videos, which all have a positive impact on user engagement and the time people spend on your blog. So with that being said, let's get to it and start creating blog content. So to add a new blog post, hover your mouse over the plus new icon at the top of the screen and click on post. And once again, this will bring you to the WordPress editor. It's the exact same setup as creating a page, so you should be somewhat familiar with how to get around. And once again, we'll go over it really quickly. We have our title section. Then below that is where you'll add your various blocks of content. Then we have some additional document and block settings, followed by the Yoast SEO plugin and your publishing options. All right, so for this particular example, we're gonna be creating a list post. And lists are a very popular format for bloggers because they're easy to write and readers love them because they're easy to scan and consume. Plus, people love sharing list posts on social media. They typically have a much higher click-through rate when compared to long-form blog posts. So for this example, our list post will be 10 Habits of Successful People. And once again, you'll notice that the Yoast SEO plugin is going to work by creating your search engine snippet as you type in the title. Next, it's time to start writing your post. So where it says write your story, place your cursor there and begin typing. Now, I'm using dummy text for this tutorial, but this is where you'll type out the intro of your post. And try to add a few short paragraphs introducing the post and always add keywords that you're trying to rank for within your intro. For example, I'd actually include the title 10 Habits of Successful People within the first paragraph of my intro because that's the keyword phrase I want to rank for. And as I begin to create the paragraphs, you can see the paragraph blocks taking shape whenever you click on each paragraph. I know we covered this a little while back, but it's a good refresher on how to access the editing toolbar within each block. And then next, let's start to create our list. And since this is going to be a list of 10, we'll wanna add a heading introducing our first habit of successful people. Go ahead and click the three dot icon to open the more option. And select insert after since we're adding a block after the paragraph block. Then click the circle plus icon. And from the pop-up menu, find the heading block. There it is. Then our first habit of successful people is that they take action. So our first heading is going to be take action. Next, you'll wanna start typing out your content for this particular section. However, for the sake of time, I'm just pasting some dummy text. Then let's add our second heading. So just like before, click the three dot icon to open the more options and click insert after. And then you'll see WordPress is giving us that shortcut again. So click the H icon to add our next heading block. And this habit of successful people is going to be that they stay organized. And once again, I'm gonna add some more dummy text. Then let's add another heading now that you have a good idea of how this process works, I'm gonna kind of move a little faster with these edits to the page. But as you become familiar with how to add the various blocks of content, you're gonna see how easy it is to create a unique and visually appealing blog post with this new WordPress editor. All right, there we go. Our blog post is starting to come together. Next, I wanna add some different types of media. So I'm gonna add a GIF. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a GIF is, it stands for Graphics Interchange Format, and it's basically a short animated loop. GIFs are a fun way to diversify your content and add some life to a blog post. So to add a GIF, we're gonna use the image block. And I'm actually gonna add the GIF underneath the first paragraph of the take action section. So click the three dot icon in the paragraph block and open up the more options menu and then select insert after. And then click the circle plus icon to open up the block menu and then find the image block. Then within the image block, click the insert from URL button, and then it's time to add our GIF. 
So nowadays you can literally find thousands of funny GIFs to add to your blog. A popular site for GIFs is Giphy.com, and I'll put a link in the show notes, but this site is my go-to when I want to find a GIF. And once you find your GIF, you'll want to click on it, and then you'll want to grab the social link. So click on where it says Media, and then copy the social link. It should be the second link there. After doing so, you'll get a notification that it has been copied. And then back at the WordPress editor, within the image block, paste the link that we just copied from Giphy.com in that field, and then click the Apply button. And voila, there is your GIF. Then to center the GIF, select Align Center from the Settings toolbar. And then to resize it, simply drag and drop either one of the blue dots there, and you can change the size of the GIF within the post. Pretty cool. Now you can add a caption below the GIF if you'd like, but I'm going to leave it as is. All right, the next thing I want to show you is how to embed an Instagram post within your blog's content. And I should mention that there are a couple of ways to go about doing this, but this is the quickest workaround I could find so far. I should also mention that this is a great tactic to not only diversify your content, but drive traffic to your social media accounts. And it's super easy to do. So the first thing you want to do is add the Instagram block where you want to embed the post. So I'm going to add the block after this paragraph. And again, it's the exact same steps to add a new block. And you should be able to just type Instagram in the search field and find the Instagram block. Next, you'll want to go to the Instagram page that has the post you want to use. And then once you find the post you want to embed, then once you find the post you want to embed, click those three little dots, and this will bring up some sharing options for this particular post. And all you're going to do is you're going to grab the link to the post, so click the Copy Link tab. And then once you get a notification that the link has been copied, head back to the WordPress editor. Then simply paste the link within the block, and click the embed button. And there we go, the post is embedded. Now there is one final step that you have to take and this is kind of annoying but it's due to a small bug within the editor that doesn't center the embedded post. I know it looks centered here in the back end of the WordPress editor but if you were to preview this post, the embedded Instagram post would not be centered within your content. Plus, when you try to change the alignment within the Instagram block, it, it just doesn't work. So this is the workaround that I found. Okay, so all you're going to need to do is make a small adjustment to the HTML. So within the block, click on that three-dot icon to open up the More Options and select Edit as HTML. Then within the HTML of the block, simply add an opening and closing center tag like so. And make sure that the closing tag has a forward slash before the word center. They should look like this and should be located at the very beginning and very end of the HTML. Then if you click your mouse outside of the widget, you'll get a notification that the block contains unexpected content. Simply click the resolve button and then click the convert to blocks button. This converts your code to a block and solves the issue. Now I know it doesn't look like a lot, but trust me, whenever you preview the post, you'll see that the Instagram embedded post is centered within the content. Don't ask me why it fixes it, but this is the workaround that I discovered and that allows you to center the Instagram post within the blog content. And hopefully WordPress sorts out this bug, but for now, that's the easiest and quickest way to embed and center your Instagram post. Okay, next, let's embed a YouTube video within our blog's content. And this is truly super easy to do, no workarounds, no bugs. So instead of adding a block, you're just going to place your cursor above or below where you want to add the video and click enter on your keyboard and that will create some extra space. Next, we'll need to get the shareable video link from the actual YouTube video. So go to YouTube and find the video that you want to embed. Then to access the shareable link, click the share icon at the bottom of the video. Then click copy to copy the link. Then back at our blog, simply paste the link within the editor like you're pasting text. 
and voila, the YouTube video has been embedded. A lot easier. <laughs> now you can add a caption below the video if you want, but I'm going to leave it as is. And overall looks amazing. We now have an embedded and responsive YouTube video within our blog post. All right, it's all starting to come together. So let's preview our work so far. So click the preview button in the upper right hand side of the screen. And our blog post is looking great so far. I'm liking it. However, one thing that I don't like is that each section of content seems to be stacked on top of one another. I want to add some space between each section so that it's easier for the audience to read and consume. Plus, it looks better when it's spread out, in my opinion. Luckily, there is an easy way to fix that. So, back at the editor, the way you're going to add some space between the headings is with the help from the spacer block. So, the paragraph before the heading is where you're going to add the block. So, just follow the same steps as before to add a new block, and then search for the spacer block. There it is. And I love this block because you can easily create space on the page without having to manually code anything. You just drag and drop this little blue dot within the block and you can edit the amount of pixels that are used for the space between the paragraphs and the headings. You can also use the spacer settings on the right hand side of the screen if you know the number of pixels you want to use. And I'm going to do that and add 15 pixels of space. Nice. So you can see the spacer block go to work and add the necessary space to help break up your content. So let's do this a couple more times throughout the post. And I know this may seem tedious, but this is just one of the million reasons why I love the new WordPress editor. You really have a ton of creative control over how your content looks. It used to be that you would have to either manually code things like this or just leave it as is and deal with it. However, with the spacer block, you can easily add space throughout your post and present a better user experience. Okay, now that we've added our spacers, we're almost ready to publish. The next thing we want to do is add our featured image. So under the Featured Image tab, click the Set Featured Image button. And this too should be somewhat familiar to you. It's the exact same process as adding a featured image to a blog page. And I'll just upload my image. And I recommend using an image size of 1200 by 800 pixels for your blog post featured images. And don't forget about the attachment details. Then click the Set Featured Image button. And our featured image is ready to go. Next, I want to go over the permalink. Now, by default, your permalinks should use the post title when creating the URL. However, you can edit it here in the permalink tab. Simply click on it to open it, and you have the ability to change the slug which are the words that come after .com in the URL string. And just remember that if you're going to change the permalink, be sure to use dashes in between each word. Next are the category settings. And if you click on the categories tab, you'll have the ability to set the category that this post is associated with. By default, all of your new blog posts are set to the uncategorized category. So it's important to get into the habit of setting the category for each blog post you publish. Simply check the box next to the category you want the blog post to be associated with. And don't forget to uncheck the uncategorized box as well. You can also add new categories within this tab if you need to. And then once everything's set, let's go ahead and preview our post again and make sure everything looks great. And it does. Our featured image is displaying above our content. We also now have adequate spacing between each section of content. I really like how the spacers add that extra amount of space between the headings. Makes the content easier to consume. I also love the different forms of media on the post as well. All right, back at the editor, it's time to publish. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to edit the Yoast SEO settings, but don't forget to do that for every single one of your blog posts before you publish them. Okay, everything is in place, so let's publish this. So go ahead and click the Publish button. And then you'll be asked if you're sure that you really want to publish. But before you do, I want to point something out. You also have the ability to schedule your posts out for future dates. So if you click the Publish Immediately tab, this opens a calendar widget that allows you to set the specific time and date that you'd like to publish the post. 
This can come in handy if you're creating multiple posts in one setting and you don't want to publish them all at once. But for this tutorial, we're going to publish it right now. So click the publish button again. And then you'll get a notification that the post is live. Pretty cool. So let's view the post and visit our site. And boom, our post is now displaying on our homepage and blog feed. Also, remember we added this post to the DIY category. So if we click on our DIY primary nav menu item, you'll see that the blog post has been added there as well because it's part of the DIY category. All right, congratulations, you just published your first blog post. You are officially a blogger. Okay, next, I wanna do some quick house cleaning. So if we go back to our homepage, which is our blog feed, you'll notice that there is a Hello World post displaying. Now this theme uses this post so that you can get a visual of how the blog is supposed to look and feel, but other than that, this post is useless. So let's get rid of it. So to delete the sample post, let's go back to the WordPress dashboard. Then let's open the post management menu by hovering your mouse over posts and click on all posts. And this will take you to the post management menu where once you begin to create blog posts, you can manage them here. You'll see all of your published and unpublished posts. So to remove the sample hello world post, simply hover your mouse over the post title and click the red trash link. This will unpublish the post and move it to the trash. Then if we visit our site, the sample post will be gone and your blog feed is ready for new content. All right, moving on. Next, let's configure the Jetpack plugin and add social sharing icons to your blog posts. Next, we're gonna add social sharing icons to your blog posts. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what I mean. So at the bottom of each blog post, we're gonna have a few social icons displaying so that your audience can easily share your content through their own personal social networks right here from your blog post. And the way we're gonna achieve this feature is with the WordPress Jetpack plugin. So back at our blog, we'll need to configure and set up the WordPress Jetpack plugin. So let's go back to the WordPress dashboard. Then you should see a Jetpack setup notification. You can click that to get started or the Jetpack menu item on the left hand side of the screen. Either will take you to the Jetpack setup. And again, just like the Gravatar, you'll need a WordPress.com account to access Jetpack. If you followed the video up to this point, you should already have a WordPress.com account. But if not, you'll need to create your free WordPress.com account in order to access this plugin. All right, so let's start setting this up. So click the green setup jetpack button. So you'll see that jetpack offers some paid plans. And if you're interested in them, I recommend you check them out. But for this video, we're just gonna use the free version. So click the start with free button. And then you'll be taken to your WordPress.com dashboard and your Jetpack account. This is separate from your WordPress.org dashboard and account, but you have the ability to monitor your blog here as well. And you may see some pop-ups greeting you and walking you through the dashboard and the security checklist, but the free version of this plugin, which you have, is automatically protecting you from brute force login attacks, and the site accelerator is serving your image and static files through a global CDN. So, you can go through the checklist if you'd like, but I can assure you that you're good to go for now. However, I do recommend coming back to the Jetpack dashboard after we finish the tutorial and check out your free plan features and support documentation just to get a better feel for the plugin. But for the sake of time, I'm going to skip that and head back to WordPress.org. So click the Return to WP Admin button, and this will take you back to your WordPress.org dashboard. I know it may seem like a lot with the Bluehost customer portal, the Bluehost dashboard, the Jetpack dashboard, and the WordPress.com dashboard, 
And I know I'm throwing a lot of new information at you and it may seem like a lot, but I can assure you that once you get your feet wet with the platform and how to navigate through the back end of your blog, this will seem like child's play. But like anything else that you're good at, it just takes practice in order for you to master it. But you will. Okay, so now that we're back at WordPress.org, you'll notice that there is a Jetpack dashboard within our WordPress.org dashboard. And you can access it here by clicking on the Jetpack tab. This is yet another way to monitor your site without having to go to WordPress.com. The Jetpack dashboard lets you access and configure the settings by clicking on the Settings button in the upper right-hand side of the screen as well. Okay, now there's a lot to unpack here, but for the sake of time, the setting I recommend checking out right now is the sharing setting. This is another way to add social sharing buttons to your blog posts. So to access this feature, click the Sharing tab, and then within the Sharing button section, you'll want to flip that little switch next to where it says Add Sharing Buttons to Your Posts and Pages. Then once it's on, click the Configure Your Sharing Buttons link, and then you'll be able to configure your sharing buttons. So the first thing I change is the button style. I like the icon only, but feel free to use whatever you like best. Then you can add additional sharing buttons by clicking the Edit Sharing Buttons link, and you'll see that there are additional social networks to choose from and add to your social buttons. Then you can reorder how they appear by clicking on the Reorder button and simply drag and drop these rectangular icons, and that will give you the ability to reorder how the buttons look on your site. Then once you've added and reordered your social buttons, click the Save Changes button, and then one more thing you'll want to do is directly below that in the Options section, and that's to uncheck the box next to Pages, and then add your Twitter handle if one of your buttons is for Twitter. This ensures that your social buttons only show on your posts and that your Twitter handle is included in the tweets whenever people share using this Twitter button. Then click the Save Changes button. And once your settings have been successfully saved, go ahead and head back to the blog. And if we visit the site, and go to a published blog post. You'll see that at the bottom of the post, our new social sharing buttons are displaying. Now there are other premium social sharing plugins out there that can give you more options, but whenever you're just starting out, this is a great option that can help you increase user engagement and expand your audience as well. Okay, so that's Jetpack, and again, it's a pretty powerful tool, and the free version gives you some great security features, speeds up your site, and is a helpful resource for WordPress bloggers. All right, moving on. Next, we're going to configure our homepage and start to design our blog. Now it's time to start designing our homepage. And the Bard theme gives you some great features that can help you not only create a unique user experience, but drive traffic to landing pages, online stores, newsletters, and so much more. And if we fast forward again real quick, you can see what we're gonna be making. So the Bard theme offers a couple of really cool ways to present additional content other than your blog feed on the homepage. As you can see, you'll have a homepage slider that displays a few blog posts with a read more call to action button. And below that, you have three featured sections that can help you drive traffic to various pages on your blog or other places like an Etsy online store. Either way, these homepage features are great ways to set your blog apart from the crowd and shine. So let's add these to our blog's homepage. Okay, back at WordPress, the first thing we're going to implement is the slider. So go ahead and access your customization menu. Then open the Featured Slider tab. And the first thing you'll want to do is check the box next to where it says Featured Slider. This will activate the slider. Then you have some additional display options that lets you configure what posts show up, how many slides there are, and whether or not you want the arrows to be displayed. Okay, next we'll configure the featured links that are below the slider. And those are those three boxes below the, the slider there. So let's go back a slide in the customization menu and open the Featured Links tab. 
And just like the slider, the first thing you'll do is check the box next to where it says Featured Links. This will enable the feature. Then you'll see that you have editing options for three featured links. Now they call them featured links, but they're actually blocks of content that link to a separate page or post. So for the first one, I'm going to link to an Etsy store. So simply fill out the title and URL fields. So I'm gonna title this shop, and then I'm actually gonna link out to an Etsy store. Now this is just some random Etsy store, but this is where you could link to your online store if you have one. And the great thing about this strategy is that you can link to and leverage a third party e-commerce platform. You don't have to host it on your blog and you can still implement a revenue stream from the homepage of your blog. So I'll just grab the URL here of this Etsy store and paste it within the URL field on the featured link section. Then let's add an image. So click the select image button and you know what to do here. And you have the ability to crop the image, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. Then after you have your image, looks really huge, but don't worry, it will automatically resize as you add additional featured links. So let's add our second one. And in the featured link, number two title field, I'm gonna type out free ebook. And this is gonna to link to a landing page that promotes a free ebook. However, in order for someone to receive the ebook, they have to sign up for my mailing list. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is a quick landing page that I created with this theme. And I'm not gonna go into great detail on how to build a landing page in this video, but you can easily create a new page, add some content, and then embed an Aweber form within the page. And voila, you have a landing page. All right, and then back at the featured link section, simply add the URL of that landing page here. And then we'll add our image. And then I'll go ahead and upload my image. And then skip the cropping. And we now have our second featured link section. Looks awesome. All right, time for the last one. So I'm gonna title this one Work With Me and I'm going to connect it to my contact form. This is yet another way to generate leads for sponsorships and facilitate potential business inquiries. So let's add the URL of your contact page and then find an image you wanna use. And boom, looks great. I absolutely love the way that it displays that content. All right, so let's publish our changes. So click the publish button. And beautiful, look at that. You now have a professional looking slider on your homepage promoting your blog posts and driving traffic to them, as well as three blocks of content that are linking to various aspects of your blog and business. This feature can not only drive traffic, but potentially increase revenue. Nice work. All right, moving on. Next, I'm gonna show you how to diversify your navigation menus by adding what this theme calls an alt sidebar, short for alternative sidebar. This is yet another way to showcase your content and create a unique user experience for your blog's visitors. And let me show you what I mean. So if you click on this three-lined icon, which is commonly referred to as a hamburger icon, it will open up your alt sidebar. And an additional and interactive sidebar will appear from the left-hand side of your screen. You'll have the option to add various different widgets within the sidebar, but again, it's just another way to diversify your content and add a unique feature to your blog. So back at your blog, to add this feature, you'll wanna access your customization menu. Then open the widgets tab and select the sidebar alt tab. Then from there, you're going to build the sidebar and start to add new widgets. And the first thing I'm gonna add is an image of my free ebook. So click the add a widget button and select the image widget 
And this is just like your initial sidebar. You'll give each one a title. So I'll title this Download My Free Ebook. And then I'll add an image of the ebook. Then after we have the image, you'll want to add a custom link. So if you look towards the right of your screen and find the attachment display settings in that URL field, I'm going to add the URL of my ebook landing page. So now that if someone clicks on the image in the alt sidebar, they'll be taken to the landing page where I can potentially collect their email address. Then you also have the ability to change the size of the image here within this drop down. So I'm going to select full size. There we go. And let's Add this to the widget. Boom, check that out. Yet another way to generate traffic to your lead magnet. Nice. All right, next I want to add a search bar. So let's add a widget and then find the search widget. There we go. Giving your audience an easy way to search and navigate your blog is good for the overall user experience. Next, I'm going to add a categories widget. This will let you display your blog's active categories. Now, keep in mind that the only categories that are associated with a blog post will show up here. So if you have categories that haven't been associated to a post, they won't show up yet. And the final widget I'm going to add is the recent posts with thumbnail widget. And if you recall earlier in the video, we installed this plugin during our WordPress setup. Either way, this plugin and widget will give us the ability to display specific posts with their thumbnails in our sidebar. So after you add the widget, you'll notice that it kind of looks overwhelming. No worries though. We're only going to configure a few things for this sidebar. Okay. So the first is the title and I'll just call this recent posts. Then it starts you off by showing five posts, but I'm going to change this to three. And let's take a look at this real quick. Looks great. Now, what if you want to change the size of the thumbnail? We'll just scroll down to the size of thumbnail section and select your desired dimension. I like the box, so I'll select 75 by 75 pixels. And then if we open the alt sidebar again and scroll down, our thumbnails are more of a boxed shape. Looks good. All right, so let's publish our changes. And we'll exit out of here and let's check out our alt sidebar. And voila, looks really good. I love this feature because it's typically something you have to pay for. Plus it allows you to easily diversify your content and present a unique user experience. Awesome. All right, moving on next, let's configure the footer. All right, so now it's time to customize the footer. And this theme gives you a few options when it comes to how you want the content to be displayed along the footer. So let's fast forward real quick and take a look at the finished product. And as you can see, we're going to design the footer so that it displays a small about me blurb, the categories of our blog, and our recent posts. The footer is a great place to encourage engagement on your blog, and that's because once someone scrolls down to the bottom of your homepage, if there isn't anything to attract a click, chances are they'll bounce. So by having a footer that has clickable links and media, it will help keep visitors on your blog and interacting with your content. All right, so let's customize the footer. So to make our changes, we'll do so through the customization menu. and then open the widgets tab. Then select footer widget. And this is where we'll add the various widgets that we want to use within the footer. So go ahead and click the add a widget button. And the first one we're going to add is recent posts. So select the recent posts with thumbnail widget. And this is the exact same process as whenever we added it to our alt sidebar. So I'll give it a title. 
and set it to display three posts. Then I'll change the thumbnail size to 75 by 75 pixels. And there's our first footer widget. Looks great. Okay, let's add our next widget. And this is going to display our blog's categories. So follow the same steps as before to add a new widget. And click on Categories. And then I'm obviously going to title this Categories. And then you'll have the option to change how they're displayed, but I like the default settings as is. Looks really clean and professional in my opinion. And then finally I want to add our About Me blurb to our footer. So before we do anything, we have to grab the code. So click the arrow to go back a slide in your customization menu. Then open the right sidebar tab. And then open the About Me custom HTML widget. And simply highlight that code and copy it. Then head back to our footer widget. And then add a new custom HTML widget. And then just like our sidebar, I'm going to title this About Me. And then simply paste the code that we just copied within the content box of the new custom HTML widget in your footer. And look at that. Our code is working beautifully and is displaying our About Me blurb in the footer as well. Love it. Okay, so let's publish these changes and make them live. So click the Publish button. And then next, we're going to edit the footer credits. So let's go back a few slides and click that arrow button twice. And then find the Page Footer tab. This will give you the ability to add some copyright text to your footer. And this will protect your content and adds a professional touch to your blog as well. And I've made it super easy to edit. Just head over to the Code Cheat Sheet and find the Footer Copyright section. Simply highlight that code, copy it, and then head back to the widget and paste it within the content block. And then all you're going to do is swap out the Lifestyle WP blog text with the name of your blog. Then the dollar sign year and copy code will automatically update the year and add the copyright symbol after your blog's title within the footer. And like I said, this protects your content legally and adds a professional touch to your footer. Next, by default, the footer will display your theme's credits. You can keep it as is, but here's how to remove it if you want to. So head back a slide in the customization menu and open the additional CSS module. Now, the CSS module is an area where we can quickly add CSS snippets of code whenever we want to make a change that requires some additional coding. And this is an amazing new feature that WordPress added a few updates ago, and it really comes in handy whenever you're redesigning things like we are within the footer. And again, I've made this super simple for you to do so that all you have to do is copy and paste the ready-made code within the CSS module. So head over to the cheat sheet again and find the Remove Footer Credits section. Highlight and copy that code. And then paste it in the additional CSS module. Perfect. Then there's one more final housekeeping thing that I like to do with this footer, and that's to remove the footer break in between the credits and privacy policy. It's not a huge deal, but I like to remove it. So head back to the cheat sheet again and find the remove footer break section, highlight and copy that code, then head back to the additional CSS module and paste it like so, and voila. Now you can't really see it, but let's publish this really quick so that you can see how we've cleaned up the footer. So click the publish button and let's exit out of here really quick. And our lifestyle blog is really starting to come together. And if we scroll down to the footer, you can see that we now have a professional looking copyright text with our privacy policy link. Looks fantastic. Okay, moving on. Now the real fun begins. It's time to monetize your blog by adding multiple revenue streams.
So this is my favorite part, monetizing your blog. And the way we're going to earn revenue with the blog is through affiliate marketing. Now, there are multiple ways to earn money with a blog, but affiliate marketing is my main source of revenue for all of my blogs and has allowed me to earn tens of thousands of dollars of passive income online. Now, if you're brand new to affiliate marketing, no worries. I'm going to break it down for you in a few seconds. But first, if we fast forward real quick, you can see a quick example of what we're going to be making. So what you're looking at right now is display advertising using affiliate campaigns within the sidebar. Again, affiliate marketing is one of the most profitable marketing strategies, and this theme sidebar offers some premier advertising space within your blog. Now, since I'm going to be showing you how to implement affiliate marketing campaigns, you'll need to disclose to your audience that they're clicking on an affiliate link. So in addition to your affiliate offers within your sidebar, I'm going to show you how to add an affiliate disclaimer as well. This will not only protect you legally, but it allows you to be transparent with your audience, which is always a good thing. This ultimately leads to more conversions because you're building trust with your audience by being honest. Now, before we get started, I want to give you a quick rundown on how affiliate marketing works. So it's pretty basic, but here's the gist. Step one is you sign up for a reputable company's affiliate program like DSW. And please make sure you join an affiliate program that makes products that align with your audience's interests. Step two is you promote the affiliate offers on your blog through display advertising, affiliate links, or email campaigns. And step three, you get paid. So anytime someone clicks on your affiliate link and makes a purchase, you get money. So let me show you a few ways you can start setting up affiliate revenue streams on your blog. Okay, getting started with affiliate marketing is a pretty straightforward process. One way is to go directly to the company you wanna partner with and fill out their affiliate program application. You can typically do this by going to the footer of a company's homepage and finding the affiliate link. And for this example, I'm using the DSW affiliate program. And clicking it should take you to their affiliate program page where you can start filling out the application. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire application process, but this will give you an idea of what you'll need to do in order to become an affiliate for a company by going directly to their website. And once you're at their affiliate page, they'll typically walk you through the application process. And then once you fill out the application and hopefully are approved, you can start earning money with your blog through their affiliate program. Another affiliate marketing strategy is to join an affiliate network. And affiliate networks are great because they offer a platform that allows merchants and publishers to discover one another. And if you're new to the concept, merchants are companies that offer affiliate programs and publishers are affiliate marketers who promote these companies on their sites. Now, affiliate marketing can be a very lucrative strategy when it's done right, and lifestyle blogging offers some of the most reliable and high converting affiliate networks around. For example, CJ Affiliate is one of the biggest and most popular affiliate networks out there. They give you the tools, data, opportunities, and guidance to grow your brand and extend your reach across a variety of platforms. They're a great resource for affiliates and they offer partnerships with thousands of companies that can help you earn money by promoting products on your blog. Then there's also Reward Style. And with over 100 million in retail sales, this ready to shop inspiration hails followers from top global influencers and is another great revenue stream for lifestyle bloggers as well. Additionally, they partner with reputable companies, which in turn is good for affiliate marketers because that gives us an opportunity to partner with great companies and promote products that are actually in demand. Finally, there's Share a Sale. And this is also one of the affiliate networks that Leatherology is associated with. And Share a Sale is another one of my top recommended affiliate networks for a few reasons. For starters, they've been around for almost 20 years. They also have an amazing customer support team that will allow you to talk to an actual human being if you have an issue or need some help with your account. And additionally, they partner with reputable companies, which in turn is good for affiliate marketers because that gives us the opportunity to partner with great companies and promote products that are actually in demand. Okay, so after you've joined your affiliate networks and found a product to promote, you'll be given a unique affiliate link. And the affiliate link is the most important aspect of this process because this is how you will track who uses that link and it's how the company can tell if someone makes a purchase through your link, which in turn leads to you getting paid. And each affiliate network and program are different, but they will have a unique affiliate link designated just for you so that you can get paid. And just a quick example of what that looks like 
If we go to my share a sale account, which is what you're looking at right now, I'm an affiliate for Optin Monster. And within my account under the link section, I can easily access my unique affiliate link for this particular product. Then the strategy is to add this link to my blog so that I can direct traffic to this product. And then if someone makes a purchase through my affiliate link, I get paid. So let me show you a few quick ways to implement affiliate marketing revenue streams on your blog. The first is through the use of the affiliate link. So for this example, let's say that I've been approved to be an affiliate for DSW and I have an affiliate link for some of their shoes. So one way to promote traffic to that is to add an image in the sidebar that links to the product page through my affiliate link. So to achieve this, go to the customization menu, and open the widget tab. And then we're gonna be updating the right sidebar. So open the right sidebar tab, and we're going to add a new widget. And we wanna add the image widget. Then I'm simply uploading an image of the product. And typically whenever you become an affiliate for a company, they'll provide you with all these different types of resources like images of their products for you to promote. Then within the attachment display settings, I'm going to add the affiliate link from DSW to the URL field. And I'll also set the size to full size. It's just a personal preference. And then don't forget to title this section. And I'll just call this shop. And there it is. And then whenever we click on the image, the visitor will be taken to your affiliate offer. Now let's say this particular affiliate offer pays you 10% of the sale for each paying customer you refer. And let's also say this product is around $300. That means you'll earn $30 for each sale. That doesn't seem like a lot, but once you start building traffic to your blog and you get 100 people to make a purchase through your affiliate link, that's $3,000 from one affiliate product. And that's just one product. You could potentially do this with multiple products. That's why I love affiliate marketing so much. Okay, moving on to another affiliate marketing strategy, and that's with Amazon Associates. Amazon is the most used e-commerce platform in the world, and it presents a great opportunity for you to add additional revenue streams to your blog. Amazon Associates is the affiliate program for Amazon. It's free to join, and all you need to do is sign up for a free standard Amazon account and then apply to the Amazon Associates affiliate program. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that all affiliate programs will wanna see that you have a professional digital platform in place to promote their products. So you'll wanna have launched your blog before you sign up for any of these programs. However, once you have your blog up and running, Amazon Associates offers a ton of great resources for you to earn a passive income online. Now, I'm not gonna go into a deep dive of the Amazon Associates platform in this video, However, I have an online master's course on affiliate marketing and I go into much greater detail on how to use Amazon Associates Affiliate Program. And if you're interested in learning more about that course, I have a link in the show notes titled Ben's Affiliate Marketing Course that will give you all the details about enrollment and how to sign up for the online course whenever it's available. Okay, so once you get approved for the Amazon Associates program, if you hover your mouse over product linking and click on product links, you'll be able to build a link to a specific page from Amazon. So check this out. In the search field, I'm gonna type in Apple for Apple products. And this is technology products, not the fruit, just to be clear. And then once we find our product, Click the Get Link button, and then you'll have some options on how to promote this product on your blog. On the next screen, you can get the text and image, text only, or the image only. I'm gonna use the text and image for this ad, so I'll just stay on this tab. Then you also have the ability to customize the ad and make it your own. You even have a preview here, so you can get an idea of what it will look like on your blog. Then once your ad is ready, Click the Highlight HTML button and copy the code. I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command-C on my keyboard. Then back at the blog, we're gonna add another custom HTML widget. 
So once again, click the Add a Widget button within the Customization menu, and then find the Custom HTML Widget. Now before you add the Amazon HTML, I want you to add a center opening and closing tag like so within the HTML widget. This will center your Amazon ad and make it look uniform within your sidebar. Then in between the center tags, paste the HTML that you just copied from Amazon and boom. We now have a professional looking Amazon ad running on our site that is directing traffic to your affiliate offer. Another thing to point out is that Amazon pays 3% commission on headphone sales. So these are around $144 and that means you'd get almost $5 per sale. And once you start building up traffic to your site, if you make 200 sales, that's close to $1,000 from just this affiliate offer. There's a ton of potential with Amazon Associates and their strong brand can help you increase your conversions. Okay, and you can give this a title if you want. I'm just gonna title this Deals. And looking good, I like it. Next, it's time to add our affiliate disclaimer to the sidebar. Now, I'm not a lawyer and this shouldn't be considered as legal advice, but an affiliate disclaimer will not only protect you legally, but it ensures that you're following FTC guidelines. But more importantly, it allows you to be transparent with your audience, which is always a good thing. This ultimately leads to more conversions because you're building trust with your audience by being honest. So to add the disclaimer, we'll be adding another custom HTML widget. So click the add a widget button and then find the custom HTML widget. And then let's give this a title. So I'm gonna use affiliate disclaimer as the title and then add your disclaimer in the content section. And if you need help formulating an affiliate disclaimer, you can copy this one or you could check out the link in the show notes titled affiliate disclaimer template where you can access a template designed to help you create your own disclaimer. So let's publish our changes. And then exit out of the customization menu. And if we scroll down a bit to our sidebar, you can see that you have officially monetized your blog with affiliate marketing. These are all great monetization strategies that can optimize your conversions and potentially increase your revenue. Plus it looks really professional. These types of ads add credibility in my opinion because it shows visitors that these brands want to be associated with you and they trust you enough to promote their products. So win-win. All right, we're almost there. Your blog is a few minutes away from being launched. But before we finish up, there are a few tips that I wanna share with you. The first has to do with SEO. By default, WordPress hides your blog from the search engines. And that's because your blog isn't optimized for the search engines when you're just starting to build it. However, now that you have a search engine friendly blog that is structured correctly and has content, you're now ready for the search engine bots to crawl your site. So one way to let the search engines know that your blog is ready can be configured in your WordPress dashboard. So back at your dashboard on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over settings and click on reading. Then towards the very bottom of the reading settings, you'll see an option for search engine visibility. And like I said, by default, WordPress discourages search engines from indexing your blog. So to encourage them to crawl and index your site, simply uncheck that box. And then click the Save Changes button, and you're good to go. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to configure the SEO settings for your homepage. And if you remember, every page and blog post we created in this tutorial, we updated the SEO settings within the back end of the WordPress editor in the Yoast SEO plugin. And you can do the same thing for your homepage by hovering your mouse over the Yoast icon on the left hand side of the screen and clicking on Search Appearance. And this allows you to configure how your homepage will look in the search engine search results. You can change things like the SEO title, meta description, knowledge graph, personal info, and title separator. Now one thing I should mention is that none of this guarantees that your blog will be indexed by the search engines. So you'll also need to submit a sitemap to all the major search engines in order for your blog to be properly indexed. Luckily, the Yoast SEO plugin takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting and automatically creates an XML sitemap for your site.
Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a sitemap is, it's basically an easy way for you to inform search engines about pages on your site that are available for crawling. A sitemap is a file where you can list the web pages of your site to tell Google and other search engines about the organization of your site's content. And search engine web crawlers like Googlebot read this file to crawl your blog. So you can view your sitemap by going to the Features section of the Yoast SEO plugin. And to get there, hover your mouse over the SEO icon and click on General. Then at the top of the Yoast SEO General Settings page, click on the Features tab. Then just make sure that the sitemap lever is switched to On, and it is. Another useful tip is to check and make sure the sitemap is configured correctly. And you can do that by viewing the sitemap URL and then copying it and pasting it on xmlsitemaps.com. And here's how you do that. So to access the sitemap URL, click on the little question mark icon, and then click on the see the XML sitemap link. And this will take you to your sitemap. Now, it doesn't look like much, but trust me, this is very important to your blog. Then, once you're at your sitemap, you'll want to check the validity of it to ensure that Google can crawl it and index your site correctly. So, to check the validity of the sitemap, copy the URL, and then go to xml-sitemaps.com. I'll put a link to this tool in the show notes. And once you're at the site, click on the SEO tools menu item and then click the Validate XML Sitemap link. Then simply paste the sitemap URL in the field provided, and the tool will check if your sitemap is formatted correctly. And it is, no issues detected, perfect. Now remember, this doesn't automatically guarantee that your blog will be on the search engine results. You'll still have to submit your sitemap to the search engines. And this is different for each search engine, but the most common search engine is by far Google. And the way to notify Google is through the Google Search Console, which is what you're looking at right now. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to walk you through the entire process in this video, but all you need to do is sign up for a free Google Search Console account, verify your site, and submit your sitemap. It's fairly straightforward, and I have a video that walks you through that process that you can access in the show notes titled Verify Your Site with Search Console. But once you have your Google Search Console account, you'll just go to the sitemap section by clicking on the sitemaps tab in the sidebar. Then where it says add a new sitemap, simply paste the URL that we copied from Yoast a few moments ago and click the submit button. This will ping Google and let their search engine bots know that your site is ready to be crawled. All right, moving on. Next, let's make sure your SSL certificate is in place. The final thing I want to cover before you launch is the SSL certificate. One of the many reasons why I recommend and partner with Bluehost is that they provide a free SSL certificate whenever you sign up with my affiliate link. Now, if you're new to the concept, an SSL basically creates a secure path for information and data to be passed back and forth online. Here's how it works. Whenever a visitor enters your SSL protected blog, your SSL certificate creates an encrypted connection to the visitor's browser. This means that any information like passwords, usernames, credit card information, etc. that's passing between your blog and their browser will be scrambled and virtually impossible for hackers to access. Additionally, when your blog is protected with an SSL certificate, a padlock icon and the HTTPS prefix will display on your visitor's browser bar. This not only notifies them that your blog is safe and secure, but it also assures your readers that you take their security seriously. Luckily, Bluehost makes it super simple to set up and check. And since your SSL certificate comes free, you can determine whether or not your SSL is activated and the HTTPS prefix is displaying all within your Bluehost customer portal. So let's head back to Bluehost. So hover your mouse over Bluehost in your WordPress dashboard and click on back to Bluehost.
Then once you're back at the Bluehost customer portal, click on the My Sites tab on the left-hand side of the screen. And then hover your mouse over your site. You should only have one, but if you have multiple, find the site you want to configure and click the Manage Site button. And this will bring you to the overall site management dashboard for your blog. When you have some more time, I recommend you get yourself familiar with this part of the portal, but for now, we're only concerned with the security settings, so click on the Security tab. Then you'll just want to make sure that the free SSL certificate switch is turned on and is green, and you'll be good to go. If it's showing as unavailable, I recommend reaching out to Bluehost to make sure everything is technically in the right place. Their technical support team can get you squared away if you're running into any issues. Okay, moving on. Let's go back to WordPress really quick, so click the Log into WordPress button. And here we are, it's finally time to launch your blog. This is it. After all of your hard work and after hours of following along in this tutorial, the moment you've been waiting for is here. It's time to show the world what you've been working on and it's time for you to shine. So, if you remember, Bluehost displays a coming soon page in place of your actual blog. But now that you're ready to launch, it's time to lift the curtain, remove the coming soon page, and showcase all of your hard work. So, to officially launch your blog, you'll wanna to go to your Bluehost dashboard. And a quick way to get there is to click the Coming Soon Active button at the top of your screen. Then all you gotta do is click the blue launch button, And congratulations, your blog is now live. So there you have it. You now have a fully functional lifestyle blog that is ready for the world. The Bard theme coupled with the power of WordPress and Bluehost is a digital launchpad for multiple types of industries and campaigns. It's a great way to start an online business and building a blog is your first step towards becoming an online success. So that's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. As always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.